cup, it doesn't matter. It's just as tough as anything. Short, short window. All right, you ready, gentlemen? You ready? Yes, we are ready. Uh, let's get the right stuff here. Commissioners, you ready? Carrie? Are you good? Okay. Call the CRA meeting to order. City Clerk, if you call the roll. Mayor Owen. Here. Vice Mayor Hartman is excused. Commissioner Colodi. Here. Commissioner Sachs. Here. Commissioner McGurk. Here. Thank you. Okay, first item up is the is public participation. If anyone here, sorry, Tony. If anyone here would like to speak on this topic, and this is just the CRA meeting, not the not the rest of the meeting. Um, any members of the public wish to speak? Seeing none. No consent agenda, no old business, new business. Tony, I believe you have a presentation. Yes, I do. Thank you, Mayor. In 2014, the city was going through the process of establishing this CRA. And at a public meeting, there were residents who came forward with a survey. And the results of the survey that was taken of citizens of the historic west side the number one item was modern, energy efficient, and affordable housing, parentheses, including senior housing. So fast forward to June 26, 2018, the City Commission approved an interlocal agreement with the New Smyrna Beach Housing Development Corporation, which is an arm of the Housing Authority, to assist with the significant need for affordable housing. The CRA purchased five pieces of property located on the corners of Julia and Dimmick and in the area of Julia and Dimmick. And so this uh, interlocal agreement called for three phases of development of affordable housing there on Julia. So the first phase is under construction. You may have seen this. Um, Here, I'll pass. That's a picture of phase one. The, the work is being done by uh, contractors hired by the Housing Authority. The CRA bought the property, and I want to recognize Donna Banks for handling the negotiations in the property uh, purchase, and um, bought uh, three of the parcels. Um, so moving forward, <coughs> we're now talking about phase two. Both phase one and phase two are duplexes for senior housing. And um, phase two calls for a contribution from the CRA of $75,000. That's referenced in our current interlocal agreement, but we anticipate we'll need another interlocal agreement before the ship funds are released, probably in October, just to uh, specify the phase two and the details of it being a <coughs> Uh, senior housing duplex. So in any event, we're here tonight to uh, present this request from the Housing Authority for $75,000 towards the construction of a senior housing duplex, which will be <coughs> next to and adjacent to this first phase. Uh, we have Regis Sloan is the vice chair 
of the Housing Authority. She's here to answer any questions, and of course, Donna's here too. Okay. Any uh, one more note sure. we have in our 10 year CIP, Capital Improvements Plan, there's uh, partnerships to facilitate new affordable housing, 500,000. If this item is approved by the CRA and City Commission, uh, we estimate we'll, uh, we'll still have about a, over $100,000 left after the purchase of the, all these other properties and other work we've done. Okay. So staff is looking for a, a motion for approval of a $75,000 match and uh, I'd like to one comment in here that that would also state upon commission approval of the grant application. I think is also the the, the ship grant application. So <coughs> the housing authority is the applicant. Yeah. Mayor, so move. Second. Second. Any discussion or questions? Hearing none. City clerk. Commissioner Colodi. Yes. Commissioner Sachs. Yes. Commissioner McGurk. Yes. Mayor Owen. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Any other items for the good of the CRA meeting? Hearing none, this meeting is adjourned. The next meeting will begin at 6.30. We'd like to just keep rolling, but we've got to wait till the, till the published start time. So. Quickest meeting. That's, that's right. Yeah.
Got it. Okay. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, ready? Carrie, good. Okay, the regular meeting of the City Commission for Tuesday, April 9th will come to order. Please silence your cell phones and City Clerk, if you would call the roll. Mayor Owen? Here. Vice Mayor Hartman is excused. Commissioner Colodi? Here. Commissioner Sachs? Here. Commissioner McGurk? Here. Thank you. Okay, Police Department Chaplain Sheila Turner will give the invocation. Please stand for the invocation. Remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to come together today to celebrate this great season of Easter. And also, we thank you that you're allowing us to make good decisions for this great city of New Smyrna Beach. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Changes to the agenda. I think we had one item to pull, carry 9C. Item number 9C, um, ordinance 1819, first reading of an ordinance which would amend the interlocal service boundary agreement needs to be uh, withdrawn at this time and postponed to a later date. Okay. So if you were here for item 9C, you can have dinner instead. Uh, I would also like to pull item 7C. Uh, that opportunity is no longer in front of us, as I understand it. Um, we had a kind of a short fuse on that proposal, and uh, and it passed. So hopefully we can be positioned if that kind of opportunity ever comes again. So so that was item 7C. Any other changes to the agenda? Hearing none. Got some proclamations and recognitions. Okay. We'll start with Arbor Day, April 26, 2019. This is Arbor Day in New Smyrna Beach. So whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees, and whereas the holiday card Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska. Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world. Whereas trees can reduce the erosion of topsoil by wind and water, lower our heating and cooling cost, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce oxygen, provide habitat for wildlife. And trees that, Jake, did you write, does this year, did you write this? <laughs> it's, all, it's all true, it's all very good. <laughs> trees are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products. And whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community. And whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. Now therefore I, Russell, and Mayor of the City of New Smyrna Beach, do hereby proclaim April 26th as Arbor Day. And I urge all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and to support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands and our further edge all citizens to plant and care for trees to gladden the hearts and promote the well-being of this and future generations. You know, one of my favorite sayings talking about planting, and it usually doesn't apply so specifically to trees, but they say the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The next best time is today. So let's get out there and plant some trees. I think uh, Faith Miller with the city's operations department is, is here um, to, to receive this. And I believe, Faith, you have details on, we've got an Arbor Day program where trees are available. Do you have some details on that you can share? Sure, we're having our Arbor Day celebration on Friday, April 26th at 10 a.m. at Riverside Park. We're gonna give away 300 trees, first come, first serve. 
um, live oaks, crepe myrtles, or dahoon hollies. And um, we'll have some other booths with educational information on planting and beautification in trees at the ceremony too. So if you come out and join us. Okay, April 2019 is Child Abuse Prevention Month. Whereas children are vital to our state's future success, prosperity, and quality of life, as well as being our most vulnerable assets, whereas all children deserve to have the safe, stable, nurturing homes and communities they need in order to foster their healthy growth and development, whereas child abuse and neglect is a community responsibility affecting both the current and future quality of life of the community. Whereas communities that provide parents with the social support, knowledge of parenting, and child development and concrete resources they need to cope with stress and nurture their children, ensure that all children grow to their full potential. And whereas effective child abuse prevention strategies succeed because of partnerships created among citizens, human service agencies, schools, faith agencies, and the business community. Whereas the city of New Smyrna Beach is hereby dedicated to building partnerships with trusted sources of support, including community leaders, religious groups, schools, and other agencies to better reach and serve all victims of child abuse, no matter their community. Now, therefore, I, Russ Owen, uh, Mayor of New Smyrna Beach, do hereby proclaim April as Child Abuse Prevention Month and call upon all citizens, community agencies, faith groups, medical facilities, elected leaders, and businesses to increase their participation in our efforts to support families, thereby preventing child abuse and strengthening the communities in which we live. We have our victim services advocate that's here with us today to receive this. And I don't know, I'm putting you on the spot, I know, but do you have any words you can share of the, some of the things that are available and the, and the things we're doing? Sure. I'm a victim advocate with the New Smyrna Beach Police Department, and if there's ever a situation where you're not sure what to do, you can call us. We'll try to figure it out and help you through the process. So uh, police is good for lots of things, but one of them is also for advocacy for these children. Thank you. Okay, next item up is public participation. Uh, this will be your opportunity to address the commission. You'll have a three minute time limit. Uh, this will be for items on the consent agenda, uh, administrative items, new businesses, or ordinance on, on first readings. Uh, note that the second readings and public hearings, there will be a specific time you can speak on those items. So the one on animals, uh, the one on peddlers, canvases, and solicitors, uh, I think that's the only two, perhaps, I believe. Uh, those, those items you will have a chance to speak specifically on. Other items, this is your chance to speak. Take your three minutes. Come forward if you'd like to speak. State your name and address for the record. Uh, Vernon Current, 1052 Red Maple Way, New Smyrna Beach. Mr. Mayor, commissioners, I uh, drove from uh, Route 44 to Sugar Mill Drive to Pioneer. And it's 1.1 mile. Now, on the half cent handouts we were given for the projects, transportation, water, what have you, the price here estimated cost from SR 44 to Pioneer Trail is $9,750,000. So I would like to see a breakout of that, of just exactly what each phase of this project for 1.1 mile is gonna give us for $9,750,000. If I could, thank you. Okay. It's a county project, uh, but we'll get the information directly from Volusia County and we'll send it to you, sir. Okay, thank you. Others who wish to speak.
Uh, Scott Steger, uh, 120 Flagler Avenue. I'm the immediate past president of the Flagler Avenue Business Association, and uh, I want to say a couple things. One, shortest agenda I've ever seen in five years, so I don't know who did this. <laughs> Somebody wanted dinner tonight. Um, but I really just want to stand up and say thanks. Uh, what you guys do here, and I've spoken to most of you outside of this, uh, you have challenging roles. City staff, chief of police, fire chiefs usually here. What you guys do as a service to us is as a community, and we appreciate it. We don't always agree on what the way that service should go forth, but I just want to let you guys know that regardless of what's happening, there's a great deal of appreciation um, for all of what you guys do there and our, the rest of our servants. Uh, I specifically want to call out uh, Commissioner Colodi for the meeting that he had last week. I thought that was terrific. He brought together a room full of very diverse people. Um, I had a number of what I think were very um, enlightening conversations to me after you, had, you got finished speaking. I met a few people that I haven't had a chance to communicate with. I thought that went great. Uh, I was really, really tickled or happy with the fact that you were supporting the events and activities and things taking place on Flagler Avenue. I thought it was great that you stood up and said that. Uh, and I would just like to, as I'm heading out, remind you that you were going to look into a report on a specific uh, complaint, uh, a formal complaint for Wine Walk last month, and that you had committed to coming back and letting us know <clears throat> who, either who made the complaint or getting us a copy of it. Because I understand if we get three of those formal complaints that there's a magistrate appearance or something. We want to make sure that we're doing everything right. And as a business association, we're here to support you guys and work with you in whatever way we can. So thank you for my time. Thanks, Scott. While he's coming, there's seats on the front. If you want to speak, you can come on down. Yes, Joe DeLubeck, uh, 3587 Casalta Circle, uh, Venetian Bay. Uh, just wanted to speak about the preservation of trees. Every time I leave Venetian Bay and come to the city proper, I end up driving by three stations that are really kind of disturbing. One of them is the Palms. The other is the area across from Airport Road, across the street on 44, State Road 44. And the third is the section that came before the board here, and that's the corner of 44 and I believe it's Glencoe, I believe, where the uh, apartment house were going up. And as I recall the discussions at the time, especially for the last one, uh, we were, I believe, told, promised that, in fact, that facility was going to be kind of invisible from the road and was going to be protected by the tree line that was there. Well, if you've gone by that facility, uh, there is no tree line anymore. Uh, sort of the same thing across the street from Airport Road on 44. Uh, large deforestation going on, and uh, whatever is going in there, all of a sudden, all of the trees are gone. And if you've driven up Airport Road to where the palms are, there are sections where there are no trees at all. And I can only... My dream is that all of these developments ought to look like Sable Lakes where off a Pioneer Trail, all you do is you see a sign, but you don't see anything else. And the development is behind a bunch of vegetation, and uh, that's a pleasant sight for me. Thank you. Thank you, George. Yes, ma'am. Hi, um, Hi. My name is Debbie in Murata. I live at 1018 Magnolia Street. And actually, I'm here for old business, because um, I understand it's kind of a done deal that you're going to be putting uh, different things on Magnolia Street because of the problems that people say that they have there. I've lived there for two and a half years now, and um, I personally didn't notice any problems. I live at the corner of 3rd and Magnolia, and I've talked to some of my neighbors because they've come by, um, and they apparently do have a problem at the south end. Um, like I said, I hadn't really noticed anything, but I, my sister, who's here with me tonight, and I um, had the house on that corner renovated and um, put a ton of money into it, put a picket fence up around it. Um, I spent a lot of time in the front yard, and uh, just this past Sunday, I was outside um, whitewashing, uh, power washing my fence, and not to mention the city sidewalks out in front of my house, Thank which you. were really dirty. Um, so, but my point is, is that I read in the paper that it's a done deal 
what you're going to do on that street, and one of them is a stop sign out in front of my house. Now, I already have a stop sign on 3rd. Now you, you want to put stop signs on Magnolia, so I'm going to have a four-way stop there. And I, like I said, I spent a lot of time in my yard, and I noticed Sunday how much traffic is on that road, which is fine. I know it's a, you know, it's a pretty much of a throughway, and uh, that doesn't bother me. But what is going to bother me is cars stopping, 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 motorcycles, trucks. I already hear a lot of noise on third right there. My my house is, my bedroom is you know close enough to hear that noise in the morning with the trucks and all. Now if I have another stop sign out in front, it's really gonna bother my peace there. Um, I'm super against that. I really, really, really. I've already spoken to a couple of the commissioners, Mr. Sachs and um, Jason. And both of them said that they don't think that it's a good spot for a stop sign. Um, I don't. I personally think if they want stop signs, they should put them up where the problem is. I know there's one up there. I took a walk up there. There's one up there. Um, maybe they should have a couple more. And uh, my other suggestion is um, 25 miles per hour on that street. I know you have those traffic monitors, the speed monitors up there now, and I think those help. I mean, they make me stop and look. And um, one of the gentlemen mentioned, well, if we have a, if we have it 25 miles per hour, people are going to speed anyway. I said, so get get the cops out there to give them tickets. And and then they they their response was, well, if people on Magnolia Street start getting tickets, they're going to be mad. And I, my response is, if you're living on Magnolia Street and you're complaining, then you're not going to be speeding. It's going to be the people that use that road, that speed, that will be getting the tickets. And I am just really, really, really begging you not to put that stop sign there. I just feel like it's going to just ruin my peace at my house. I mean, I put a lot of money into the setting. Um, I pay a lot of taxes on that house, unfortunately. Um, and Debbie, just to sorry, see. Sorry, your time is up, but I, okay, I do but appreciate just you coming to, out and sharing. Just to see that yeah. traffic there and hear it. Yeah. It's just. Thank you for sharing. Please. <laughs> yes, sir. Hi, guys. Um, I'm just, uh, you guys are getting ready to vote on uh, the local parole the uh, uh, sidewalk application and uh, oh I'm Henry Salgado yeah just I just want to let you know that I'm here to answer any questions uh, representing and if uh, any suggestions you guys have um, I'm open to them okay thank you and I believe that will be a, a public hearing so we'll have a chance to call you back up at that time yeah thank you next up Randy Herman, 108 Esther. Good evening. Um, I'm speaking to resolution 1519 about the amendment of, <clears throat> or uh, resolution 2413 about the neighborhood council. I'm s slightly biased since I'm the chair of the neighborhood council, but um, I would urge you to um, uh, approve that. Um, I think it, in, it's a substantive shift back to the original mission um, of the council and uh, uh, focusing again on neighborhood and neighborhood development. Um, we're asking to increase the membership to nine um, as we are trying to now uh, go to all the zone meetings and ensure that members from the neighborhood council um, represent the different zones. And we're, we've got a wonderful map now that we're using that shows the neighborhoods within each zone. And so we're hoping that that will improve um, the commission's ability, or the council's ability to respond um, at an <coughs> earlier stage and maybe help troubleshoot and uh, find some solutions before they work on up the ladder. And uh, we all, they're also recommending staggering the terms. Since we're all up for renewal in the same month, um, it'd be good to, to stagger those terms. And the last thing is we um, hope to have a yearly evaluation um, to see, in fact, if this is truly you know, a worthwhile endeavor to, to, to have you know, committed citizens spend a lot of time working within the neighborhoods. And we certainly hope it will be. So I ask you to favorably regard this resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. 
Any other members of the public wish to speak? Good evening, Rose Pish, 1110 Magnolia Street. Um, we've been talking about Magnolia Street for quite a while, and the one thing that I felt really bad about was the uh, staff proposal was pre pre presented to the council prior to our last meeting where several people talked about some really bad situations. One of them was the death of her husband in front of her house. While he did not die immediately, he died two months after being in a hospital and suffering great harm. She also has a number of handicapped children who need to go back and forth across the street. And I know that the solutions that we've proposed so far don't address that area. The other area where three children came and spoke about cars actually jumping the curb line. There's no curbs up there but jumped the curb line and were partially in their front yards. And again, I would urge you to take a good look about what's going on up there. The other thing is at the corner of uh, Third and Magnolia, um, I understand how stop signs could infringe on people's rest uh, and enjoyment of their property, but there are other solutions that could slow the traffic in that area, specifically traffic tables which would slow cars down to 20 or less miles per hour and still allow uh, the flow of traffic without them lingering with their radios playing and so forth. I do think that that area needs some special consideration because of the new community center that has gone in over there plus the library. Um, the other two things I just wanted to touch on real quickly is I am thrilled and I'm gonna be sitting here with ears open on the housing that you're proposing for affordable housing for people. I just think that's really important and will really improve um, uh, the ability for all of our citizens to continue to live and enjoy the amenities that we have, have here in New Smyrna Beach. So I applaud that effort, whatever it is, I'll be listening to it. Um, and the last thing was on the one-use plastics. I know you're looking at voluntary, a voluntary um, people to do this on a voluntary basis. But I was wondering if you could consider that there might be something that the city could do, like offer them a plaque or um, you know, a place on our website somewhere for the folks that do that to give some real positive reinforcement toward that. Uh, this evening I just saw a beach in Spain that has the most enormous pile of plastic that is washing up on their beach. And I unfortunately think a lot of it came from across the Atlantic Ocean where we are. So thank you very much. Thank you. Any others wish to speak? Last chance, seeing none. We we'll close public hearing, public participation, sorry. Consent agenda. Anyone that wish to pull anything from the consent agenda? Commissioner McGurk? I'm good, thank you. Commissioner Sachs? Um, no, I have nothing significant to pull. Thank you. Commissioner Colodi? No, it's fine by me. I just had a note. I don't believe we have to pull it, uh, but just Johnny for, for future uh, minutes. And again, I don't think it's material for this, uh, but. The, the first readings, we have a section there where it's marked uh, as approved, and it notes that we all approved them. I think just for clarity, since we're not really voting on it, I think we could just leave it as the minutes were, or the, uh, the first reading was read or something like that. So just check with Carrie, make sure we get the right language, but I'd like to take it out that we, that we approved it since we're not officially voting on it. So uh, with that, we have a motion on the consent agenda. So move. Motion to approve the consent agenda. Do I have a second? Second. City Clerk. Commissioner Colodi. Yes. Commissioner Sachs. Yes. Commissioner McGurk. Yes. Mayor Owen. Yes. Mr. Mayor, may I make a quick comment on that last item? Sure. Just for clarity, in case the public does not know, the first readings we've decided not to vote. Uh, and when we do, uh, 
proclaim a yes towards that. We're actually saying we're willing to let it go forward to a second reading. And correct? we're not even really proclaiming yes on that. We are literally just reading it into the minutes and and fulfilling the the obligatory duties to have it as a public, you know, to, to have it be duly noticed and publicized. Um, so we're we're not taking as a commission. We're not taking any any action. At that time, and that's why I wanted to clean up that language in the minutes because truly we're we're, we're not proclaiming, we're not voting, we're not implying. There's we're doing nothing. We we can give feedback if there's something we like. We yeah. we have kind of taken it to to giving some any material feedback, but we're we're not taking any formal action other than the formal action of reading it into the minutes. Yeah. Anything you want to add to that, Carrie? Or did um, I? just. The small caveat that unless there there are a few different items that have public hearings on first readings and in those yeah, instances you would vote. Yes. We haven't had one of those since we made the change though, Correct. yeah. But yes. Thanks for helping me clear that up. Yep. All right, item seven A resolution twelve dash nineteen. Consider the resolution which if adopted would approve the voluntary discontinuance of single-use plastics. Do we have a staff report on this one, Carrie? Uh, earlier this year, um, you all have been talking about ways to reduce <coughs> our environmental impact that these single-use plastics have. Um, at the February meeting, I was directed to bring back a resolution um, that is voluntary and would apply citywide as well in, as an ordinance that would apply <coughs> on city property. Um, so on under administrative items, we have the resolution. It's a voluntary resolution encouraging all residents and, and <coughs> business owners in the city to voluntarily discontinue the distribution and use of single-use plastics. This includes plastic straws and polystyrene. We modeled it after, um, if you remember our previous resolution, number 2218, which has received good, um, a lot of favorable response to it, was a, uh, targeted towards plastic straws. So this one broadens the scope of that to not just plastic straws, but all single-use plastics. And that's my report. So to clarify, all we're talking about in this section, though, is the resolution that would be that voluntary discontinuance. Correct. And nope. not anything on the other. That's the a later agenda is, item. The ordinance will be on the first reading section. Correct. Um, so this is just that voluntary discontinuance, just like we had done earlier with the straws, which, as someone mentioned, I think it was very, very well received by the community. So any discussion on this item? We have a motion on this item. Make a motion. Second. To approve. Okay, any discussion on the motion? No discussion, city clerk? Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Colodi? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Resolution 12-19 is approved. Item B, phase two affordable housing, approval of a commitment of 75,000 uh, city staff, do you have a report? Mayor, commissioners, this is the same item that was on the CRA meeting just That's before the city commission. Uh, but just very quickly, the, on June 26, 2018, the city commission approved an interlocal agreement with the New Smyrna Beach Housing Development Corporation, which is an arm of the housing authority, to assist with the significant need for affordable housing. The uh, housing authority is now building a... A senior duplex at the corner of Julia, and uh, somebody wanted to see this, Julia and Demick, and the request now from the housing authority is $75,000 towards phase two of that project and adjacent uh, duplex for senior housing. Staff recommends approval. Thank you. With that same, uh, same thing about the contingent upon the other, the, what was it, fine? it's not fined, Slip, ship, the ship grant. Ship yeah. funds, yes. Yeah. This will be part of their application pro, uh, process for ship funds. Got it. So staff is asking for a motion to approve with that stipulation. Do I have a motion? So move. Second. For discussion. discussion. Yes. Commissioner. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Uh, it is a very valuable program. I'm glad to support it. I will support the next phase of it. 
But I also think that once we complete these three phases, we have to look to extend affordable housing throughout our community through modifications to our land development ordinance regarding uh, new construction and new developments. And also, uh, there are two other areas uh, in our town, two other districts that have low income that might be available for some grants. And I would like to see some, uh, some thought put into those two areas also for affordable housing. Uh, as has become very apparent, uh, simply putting affordable housing in neighborhoods that may have space for them and, uh, and do need them, it's important to spread it out throughout your town so you have uh, the ability for people to step up into different neighborhoods, improve, improve their life surroundings. And it's been shown that it has a very positive effect on those people who are, are given this opportunity to uh, kind of reach up to the new surroundings that they're in. So I support this, uh, and I will look to making more changes in the future. Any other discussion on this item? Commissioner Clody, I, I agree. I think all the research shows that. I forget all the right technical terms for it, but it, it absolutely is important that that not be concentrated. So I, I agree with the direction you're headed on that. No other discussion. We have a motion and a second. City Clerk. Commissioner McGurk. Yes. Commissioner Colodi. Yes. Commissioner Sachs. Yes. Mayor Owen. Yes. The item is approved. Section 8, Ordinance 3 19, second reading of public hearing of an ordinance which, if adopted, would amend this Code of Ordinances, Chapter 18, Animal. City Attorney will read the ordinance by title only. Ordinance number 13-19, an ordinance amending the Code of Ordinances, amending Chapter 18 animals to revise the animal control regulations, providing for codification, providing for public hearing, providing for conflicting ordinances, providing for severability, and providing an effective date. Okay. Chief. Good evening. Uh, Mike Coffin, Chief of Police, and I have with me here Megan Wilk, our animal services uh, expert, and our friends and uh, who have been doing a fabulous job from the Southeast Volusia Humane Society. And um, we're here tonight because we had some input from both the public, the elected officials, and the Animal Control Board that we needed to update our Animal Control Ordinance. So we took that information, um, got with, with everybody that, that's connected to this, and came up with a draft. Uh, that draft was massaged and changed uh, several times until we got it in front of the Animal Control Board who gave it unanimous approval. So you have the proposed ordinance modifications in front of you and this group of experts is here to answer any questions you may have. Excellent. Do we have questions for? Thank you, Mayor. Hi, how are you today? Good, how are well, you? Good, thank you for coming out. I appreciate that. Um, I'd like you to clear up maybe some confusion we have about what a holding period is, what happens the three days or seven days while they're in the holding period, and then what happens to the animal after that holding period. There seems to be, there was some concern that maybe they're put into a kill shelter or killed at that time. So if you can clarify what exactly happens during the holding and what happens where they go after the holding period. The holding period is the time to allow owners to locate their animal um, at the shelter. If the animal is bearing some sort of identification, I notify the owner immediately that, you know, I have the animal um, and that if they can't get to, you know, I can either bring it to their house at that point and if they're not available, I'll bring it to the shelter. Once at the shelter, the animal is held for the owner to pick it up um, or come look for it if there's no um, tag or identification on the animal and then afterwards the animal is then um, placed up for adoption um, you know evaluated for behavior and health and other things like that okay so the, after this whether the the holding period whether it's three days or seven days that shipped off to be killed at that time <coughs> and they're put they're actually put in a 
process where you put them up for adoption, they're taken care of, and that whole process starts. Yes, it would help speed up the, the animal would spend less time in the shelter because it would then be available for adoption after the third day versus after the seventh day. Okay, thank you. I appreciate you clarifying that. Um, you can answer this if you feel comfortable or not. Is the three days enough time for an owner to I, get a hold of you guys, track down a lost pet possibly? Have you ever had a problem with three days being too short a period? No. The minute you get home and you realize your animal is not gone, the first thing you're going to be doing is calling local shelters, calling animal control. You're not going to be waiting four or five days to be, oh, well, maybe I should check this. Maybe I should do something. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate your, uh, your comments. Any other questions of the... Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I appreciate all of your efforts, Chief, Ms. Wilk, and gentle ladies from the uh, Humane Society. Uh, I do and strongly take opposition uh, with the reduction from seven days to three days, and I wonder what is the rationale for reducing? Is it to be current or concurrent with the county? Uh, just to give you a little of my background, my thoughts on it are, uh, yes, it's true, the animal may not be killed in three days, but uh, there are many circumstances where the owner may not be able to find his animal, they may not be able to know where to go to find the animal, and three days, it, 72 hours, uh, an, an accident may happen, and that animal could be effectively put down uh, through, no fault of yours or, or no malice. So my wish would be that we would retain the seven day holding period. It would give the owner a greater chance. I don't think that the detriment to the animal would be that great. He would still <laughs> remain alive and in good care in your facility. And I, I just, uh, I cannot support three days. It just seems too short a period. So if you care to speak to that, I, I would appreciate it. Uh, yes, I understand the hesitation for the three days. Um, let me just clarify, we do not count the first day it comes in, and we do not count Sundays because we're closed to the public on Sundays. And so if someone were to show up at the shelter looking for their dog or their cat, we wouldn't be able to help them. So it's not really a 72-hour. It's um, the first day doesn't count and Sunday doesn't count. The advantage is that then the cat or dog can be placed up for adoption sooner rather than later. All the other jurisdictions that we work with are on a three-day stray hold period, and we have not had any kind of concerns with that. We haven't had irate owners showing up saying, you know, on the seventh day or the sixth day, will you already put my animal up for adoption? I appreciate that. Uh, I do know that there are communities that have seven and ten day holding periods as well. So I, I would err on the side of caution and would prefer, this is my own thought on this, uh, that if it does bear no cost to the city to hold these animals, it, it's a quality of life issue for me because if God forbid I lost an animal and it ended up at the shelter, I was late getting there and the animal was put down for some reason, it, it would be a terrible hardship, of course, for the animal. And I, I'm very sensitive to animals, as a lot of us are, um, and, and to the families who might lose this pet. So I, I would beg uh, that my colleagues would consider a seven-day holding period. It doesn't appear to be, it appears to be a negligible cost, if at all, to hold these animals for a period. And I, and I know it must be traumatic to sit in a cage and wait for your owner, but at the same time, it's better than not being there at all. So th that's uh, part of my argument. I, I don't think it's humane. Qu quick question for you on that. Um, is, is there, we've heard the, the, the pros, if you will, of you know, it, it speeds the adoption time. Um, what are the, are there potential negatives for the, the shelter, for the, for the pet? I mean, what are the potential negatives of a three to a seven? Like, how does that, how do those compare? Well, the negative for uh, the pet sitting in a kennel for seven instead of three is that it just prolongs him getting into his forever home. Yeah. From the shelter standpoint, though, I mean, capacity, I guess, at some point would come into play. It could. It could. We, we operate on a managed capacity, so we aren't taking in more than we can house. 
um, but potentially it could happen if there if we were close to crowded and we had to wait seven days before we could uh, put up an animal for adoption it could create a crowding situation and I just want to clarify that I keep hearing that after the holding period it's going to be put down it's going to be put down that's not the case um, it's if it's an adoptable cat or dog we adopt it out may I ask if the animal is unidentifiable by a chip or a tattoo um, is it immediately after that three-day period uh, relinquished by the owner they have to release it to the Humane Society no longer becomes their animal if they have not shown up to reclaim it then it does become the property of the Humane Society and we will microchip spay neuter put it up for adoption so I guess on day five someone shows up and they say oh that you know there's Billy my long-lost cat but I don't have a chip I don't have anything to, to necessarily prove that but obviously you can tell a cat and you know an animal and a owner interaction did, what, where, do they, where do they sit at that point on day five after a three-day holding period? Animal's still there, but it's up for adoption, but it's clearly theirs. How do, you, how do you handle that? We can still do a return to owner at that time. Okay. So anytime, in the, anytime owner shows up, they're still getting their animal back? Absolutely. Yeah. As long as the animal didn't come to us under some sort of circumstances <laughs> where there was abuse or right, neglect right. or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. Good clarification. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, just to clarify, he kind of alluded to it, and you and I spoke before the meeting, though. Um, from a cost standpoint, I believe our contract and staff, feel free to jump in, but we're on a per animal, not per day, basically contract price. So from a cost standpoint to the city, three versus seven is not is not changing that. We're, it's not a per animal. It's a it's a monthly fee, and if okay, we exceed yeah. a certain number of animals in a period, then it then we will have to pay over that amount. But just yeah, but the driving factor is quantity of, of animals, not quantity of days. Correct. Yes. Okay. Um, any other questions with the public hearings? We've got, we want to hear from the, uh, any Mr. public Mayor. wants to speak? Yes. Uh, two things. I prefer the seven day. Uh, I can see the three day. It does have a little bit of benefit that the animal might not be there that long because you can adopt it out sooner. Uh, I don't see any uh, specific rules and regulations concerning adopting out. Uh, my concern is not as much that the animal would be put to sleep, but that it would be adopted out if it's a nice animal to, to the wrong person. And do you have a written policy on adoptions that covers the possibility that the people adopting it may have to return it. Yes, we will always take our animals back. Um, and I'm not sure what you mean by to the wrong person adopted out. Adopted out to a person who's not the actual who's owner. Who's not the owner. OK, so right. the, let's say it's a dog, and it's now uh, in our care, and an owner never showed up to claim it, and it was adopted out. We, we follow the same adoption policy we do with anybody. We do background checks. We do landlord checks. Uh, we look up their property to see if they own or they rent. We check their vets to make sure their current pets are spayed and neutered, up to date on vaccines, on heartworm prevention if they are a dog. So we would do the same rigorous checks that we would with any of our animals. Mm -hmm. I, I, have, I have no reason to believe that you wouldn't take the best care of the animal. Mm -hmm. uh, but is there, other than this ordinance, you do maintain a set of written standards that you follow. And in that, those standards, it does address the issue if the uh, animal gets adopted out and has to come back? Oh, yes. We always take our animals back. Absolutely. OK. The, uh, the second issue, which doesn't seem to be addressed in the, uh, in the uh, ordinance, is free-range roosters. How do you deal with that? Because it's not addressed either. Uh, it's not addressed in our new ordinance. I know there's not an owner involved. There are people that may care for them. But how do you address that? Because as I read through the ordinance, probably the only way you could get um, an animal taken off the streets was if it was a hazard to people. Do you do that? Is that a procedure that you would follow? 
We would look at, at uh, no matter what animal it was, uh, although there's a difference between domestic animals and livestock. Correct. Um, you know, we're not going to deal with a wild hog that's digging in, in someone's yard. We're, we're going to call a trapper for that. So depending on what the animal is, and I know you mentioned roosters, um, I don't think I would consider a, a, a rooster or anything that, that like that a domestic animal. So if we were going to deal with that on, on a case-by-case -case basis, we would call a trapper and, and uh, address that particular problem based on a complaint from a citizen or anybody out there in the public. Correct, but you would be the agency that they would go to on that. Uh, when I did have my open house, I got people speaking on both sides of that issue. So um, knowing that it's not in this ordinance, I was just very I, curious I, as to how I, it's addressed. I would say that, that pretty much everything falls to the police department if it's not <laughs> written down somewhere. So <laughs> yes, sir, we, we would take care of that. Thank you. Commissioner Colodi, I would also, I, I read this and I thought of your, of your open house and there is a, a section in here about uh, nuisance animals and yes. it talks about chasing cars or people damaging property some of the things that the reports that I've I've heard I know there's folks on both sides of that but I, I think that is what would be used to, to cover that specific uh, case correct I right agree up? completely but yeah. I just wanted to hear it yeah okay um, Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry Jeff, if, sure. if I have two more comments and uh, and I will be through uh, my concern of course again is a personal one if you uh, have this period where you start the clock um, and, and have a business day sort of and give it that little extra leeway that says to me personally my own personal thoughts are that's a short period anyway and you're giving a little extra benefit to start that clock a bit late if you get, if you catch what I mean I do and, and so it's a short period and also the other point is we hold currently animals that are considered possibly ill with rabies and other diseases for I think it's 14 days or 10 days. It's a 10 day quarantine. Yes, and so why are we giving these, the, the poor sick animal more consideration than a healthy animal? I wouldn't suggest, although it would be nice to hope for you to hold the animal, healthy animals for 10 days as well. I've heard it, of it being done and I've heard people ask for a 10 day period, not seven, but could we, with that in mind, we're holding sick animals for 10 days, why can't we extend it uh, towards seven? So that, that's another consideration that I had. The 10 day quarantine that you're talking about is mandated by the health department. That's not our policy. Yeah. Okay, thanks. And, and I think, as I understand it, and just feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, and then we'll open the public hearing right after this, but the, the three versus seven, on day four, the animal is still going to be there being held. It's just whether or not it's available up for, up for adoption is, is what I've heard them say. Um, and I think there's even some angles around that if an owner was out of town or something and, and came in, uh, I think they would still be able to get their, get their animal. That being said, I, I haven't really settled on, I don't see the downside of going to a seven day. I haven't heard a convincing case of why that would be so terrible. For, to go to a seven day. So I, I, I think I could support uh, either one uh, at this point. But I definitely want to hear from the public because I know the rest of the commission does. So I'd ask you to hang around in case there's any follow up questions. But at this time, we'll open the, uh, the public hearing. Any members of the public wish to speak <coughs> on this item? There'll be a three limit time limit. Limit your comments just to this item, of course. Come on up. Hello, my name is Leslie Sachs, and I live at 816 East 8th Avenue, in New Smyrna Beach. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. I'd like to speak about this ordinance. Um, while the intent of this animal ordinance is designed for the well-being of animals, there's a few items that I have concerns with. The main part of this ordinance that I'm concerned about is tethering, which is on your page 14. The first sentence on tethering begins with, quote, that, that it is discouraged. If that is the case, then please just outright ban it. Dogs are social animals and become unhappy when tied up alone with a tipped over water bowl or running around in their feces. They get separation anxiety. They're fretful. They're more prone to be a biter since they feel vulnerable and more prone to disease due to the unclean conditions of running around in their filth and uh, no water. They could get dehydrated. I'd like to see tethering totally banned, 
But if that isn't going to happen, then let's give our animals an extra layer of protection and put some restrictions on this cruel practice. For example, don't tether during temperature extremes such as above 85 degrees or below 50 degrees, or during storms, or during dusk to dawn, or tying multiple animals together, or without human supervision. Ponce Inlet adopted an ordinance last July 19th with most of these restrictions. Many other cities are banning tethering altogether or severely restricting it with large civil fines. Please see the website unchainyourdog.org for more information about this cruel practice. Um, I'm also concerned about shelter holding times for dogs. I know most of the times, you know, I've, there's other cities and counties. Uh, Pinellas County uses seven days for animals with ID, five days for animals without ID. Broward County is five days for animals with IDs, three days without ID. Vero Beach, if I was stray, I want to go there, has no limits at all. Please do the right thing. I've, I've heard about euthanasia nightmares and next door neighbor, there's this dog, Ruby. She was elderly, she was sick, but she was under vet care. She had a tattoo, but I guess no way to contact the owner. And she was euthanized before three days. I guess because maybe she was sick, but she was under a veterinary's care. So that was very upsetting for me to read a week or two ago in Next Door Neighbor. Um, so it's only, I know that they're in cages. I've been to your facility years ago. Um, I know that dogs get walked, they're well cared for. So it's, it's, it's not doggy daycare, but it's close. And it's just keeping it at seven doesn't hurt anybody. And I had a friend that adopted a dog and she said she'd rather her dog be in the shelter life for seven days rather than be euthanized or adopted out to someone that may not, you know, that might bait it or fight it or whatever. And then lastly, I'd like to say thanks for, con for considering urban backyard chickens. I think that's fantastic. There's one sentence though <laughs> on page 18 that says no slaughtering on pr the property. So if someone's gonna cross their property and cut its head off, we don't want that. So can we just like not close that loophole? <laughs> That's okay. it. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Put me in a tough spot to have to cut off a of commissioner's spouse. That's okay. <laughs> she knows. Good job, Liz. Please. Hello, my name is Suzanne Palmer. I live at 605 Glen Devon Drive. And I have not uh, had an opportunity to read this ordinance, but I am initially from Key West, Florida, and if any of you have been down there recently, you know that the chickens are rampant. They're destroying yards, they're keeping people awake, they're in the streets. It's really a serious problem down there. I was riding my bicycle on the bike path that runs behind, I don't know the name of it, behind the county fire department firehouse over by Winn-Dixie and it runs up to um, Sugar Mill Road. I saw two large roosters there just the other day. So please be careful that this doesn't get out of hand. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you. Sure. As part of public participation? Yeah. Um, my name's Debbie Jackson and I'm the president at Southeast Volusia Humane Society. And I've heard a lot about, you know, the, the words euthanization keep coming up. And um, Sarah is our new executive director. Also, our shelter is a no-kill facility. And an animal would only be euthanized if there is nothing else medically that could be done for them or if they are a danger to um, the community by being aggressive or something like that. We work very hard. Our euthanization um, numbers are pretty much the lowest around from any of the other shelters and Sarah has worked very very hard with that. She has, our shelter is on a, 
right now I would say a number 10 basis compared to where it used to be. And I've been with the shelter 14 years. So I think we're looking at a place where the animals are taken very, very good care of and being euthanized is the last thing that would ever happen to an animal and only for those two reasons, not because they're in our shelter for too long. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other members of the public wish to speak on this item? Okay. Hearing none, we'll close the public participation, bring the discussion back to the commission. Uh, I didn't catch when Leslie was speaking, but that, that concept of with and without ID, is it more time with or without the ID? I didn't hear which way that went. Was it like three days with and seven days without? No. Yeah. More time with ID, yeah, okay, makes sense. Uh, on, on tethering, I would just share, um, that was a, um, we got a really, really brief uh, overview at, the, at a round table meeting yesterday and a lot of other towns are, uh, are looking into that. Um, I think it's certainly something if we wanna be more progressive than what's laid out here, so we're at second reading on this, um, I think we could Hopefully, if the commission is pleasure, we can not make substantive changes to this. You know, the three versus seven. I think we could tweak a little bit. City attorney can advise, but um, but I certainly think this tethering is something we could come back. At the things she mentioned, extreme temperature, dusted on, etc. I think those are all measures, and I haven't had a chance to review what we got just the other day. I think Pam may have put it in y'all's y'all's boxes as well. If not, we can get you some information on what uh, the county and other cities are are doing with tethering. But I know that is a, a hot button issue. And I personally like the idea of the with and without, maybe that's the, the middle ground here is the with and without ID on the, on the days. So any other discussion or questions of the team we have here, or do we have a motion on this item? Mr. Mayor, just a few more comments, please. Sure. Uh, I didn't get to speak on the tethering subject. Uh, growing up, we did have lots of tethered dogs and being a child we didn't know how bad it was for the animal but you realized it was either very angry on the tether and you couldn't approach it or it was very anxious to see you and so there were obviously uh, problems with with its behavior uh, I, I cannot see it it being a normal pet being kept on a tether for who knows how long days hours weeks uh, the, in fact, the Humane Society, the National Humane Society, does not recommend tethering. They do recommend if you're going to tether, though, they give all these conditions. Now, Ponce Inlet had very good intentions with Ponce's law, and, but there are so many conditions that are we going to ask the chief and his force or, or, or uh, 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 code enforcement to go out and inspect every different <laughs> aspect of how you should properly keep a dog tethered? I say just ban it. That, that's my opinion on banning. As far as chickens go, uh, I know people have had problems with roosters. It, it is probably so here as well as in Key West. The object of the urban chicken is to uh, allow only hens, uh, which don't make as much noise, which actually are a benefit to the environment and may not cause problems with uh, neighbors as long as they're properly kept and uh, we don't propose to have any roosters. And in fact, when I first proposed this, when it was summarily uh, kiboshed, <laughs> it was strongly opposed the first time I brought it up, um, it, it was a problem. And uh, it, because it was so strongly opposed, I withdrew the motion. But at this time, I would like us to consider what other cities have considered, and those were trial periods. If, you, if, in, if my colleagues are strongly opposed to a chicken, urban chicken ordinance, I would propose a trial period, which other cities and the county had actually done. And I had not heard that any city said, we don't like the trial, we're gonna back off from it. So, yeah. so if, I, if I may just quickly, I, th I think what's in this proposed ordinance that we're waiting on a motion for is, it, it, I think the, we are allowing urban chickens in here, so that I think this is what we're okay. what we're looking for. So, um, I'd say we before we go further discussion, let's see if we can get a motion on 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 this. The things that I've heard being talked about, really, is kind of the the days 
uh, 3 verses 7, it's written as 3, um, 3 verses 7, or perhaps some middle ground of 3 without ID and 7 with ID. Um, any closing thoughts from staff? Anything you want to add? Just a, a quick issue on the tethering. I know there's very strong opinions on both sides of this. Uh, with, without something in there for tethering, if, we want to, if, if you're talking about banning it altogether, that will have a, an effect on primarily low-income families. People in low-income families use tethering to keep the dog controlled in their yard or, or their, their area that they're supposed to be in. Without, I mean, these folks are not going to build a fence around their yard to now keep the animal contained and the animal's going to run loose. Well, you know, what Megan was, was saying earlier is that we will always try to reunite an animal with uh, the owner before even taking it to the shelter if it comes into, into our possession. She does a very good job of doing that investigation. But once the animal goes into the shelter, there's some costs associated if the owner wants to come back and reclaim their animal. So again, without some type of tethering, and, and you could put whatever restrictions you want, and I would just ask you to be concerned about what, how, what kind of effect that has on low-income families. Very good, very good point for us to consider. And at this point, when we get the tethering language that's written here, I would um, clarify and city attorney can jump in, but if we, I think we could tweak some small wording on the days if the motion considered that. Making substantive changes to tethering, I think we'd have to do another reading. We'd have to kind of go back to the drawing board. Is that? Um, it, if, if that section needed to be re rewritten, I think that I would need to come back here. We would need to continue it to a certain date so that I can get a draft back before you. I haven't looked <clears throat> to see, you know, I yeah. don't have something that I would just. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I will make a motion. Okay. Uh, I make a motion. We approve the ordinance uh, as it's written, and I would like to have some discussion on some of the modifications you've proposed. But I'll make a motion to approve it as written right now. Okay, and then you're going to amend that motion once we have those I'd discussions? I'd be willing to amend it, yes. Okay, all right, we have a motion to approve as written. Second for discussion. I have a second, all right. Okay, um, on the tethering issue, I would like to leave it in uh, for the reasons the chief mentioned, and also we do have a lot of rural areas where it's, it's really necessary. Uh, people are not going to fence in a couple acres. Uh, for their dog, and their dog uh, should be outside certain times during the day. So I would leave it in. Uh, in the city area here, uh, hopefully we won't see too much of it, uh, but I do think that that possibility has to remain, so I wouldn't change that. Uh, I, do, I do agree with Commissioner Sachs on the changing of the time uh, and I like the, the, the double time frame aspect, whereas if a dog does have microchips in it, uh, that it should be held for seven days. Uh, there's plenty of times when if you go away, you leave your pet with a friend who might not be as conscious or conscientious as you are, and that extra time period it might be necessary. So I would like to... Uh, leave it in for animals that are properly identifiable. The three days for the other ones, I can live with that. So if anybody would like to make okay. an amendment well, along that Can you that state line. that specifically with, so I can consider seconding it? So it was leave it as three, but if an animal has identification, seven, chip, tattoo. That is correct. That's, that's an amendment I would accept. Okay. All the other stuff on tethering is no change. No change. Um, so the only only real change was the the three versus uh, the three versus seven. Um, but before you second that, let me just ask one one question: If you'd consider uh, the language on the chickens shall not be slaughtered on premises, um, would it be substantive change to change that to something like in residential areas? Or I don't, I don't know what the. I mean, I, I don't think that's a giant loophole that we're opening up. Certainly, if my neighbor comes into my yard to slaughter their chickens, I'm going to have an issue with that. <laughs> but I don't know if we can change that by just striking. I mean, it's a. I'm trying to think of how. You, I mean, so if I, if I want to have chickens on my property, I yeah. come in, I get a permit, I have to meet all the conditions, and I can't kill it on my property. So the loophole is 
Well, that's what we that's what we say now. It says it shall not be slaughtered on premises. Right. So where else would it be slaughtered? I guess would butcher. An abattoir. A butcher. Yeah. Just so, not. Yeah. So I mean, if the chicken gets to be. I don't know a lot about chickens, but old, <laughs> and it needs to um, be taken to the, somewhere. Yeah. I mean, so that's still that's not okay. on premises. Yeah. Um, that That's okay, yeah. I mean, the concern raised was basically, you know, the loophole is, you know, not on your property versus can you just go oh, to your neighbor's property. Oh, you take it property. to your neighbor's property and... It's not on your premises. I mean, It's, it's not it's the a, premises that you're permitted to hold. It's, it's hold a real fine loophole, I, but I'm just, can we just, right. um, you know... Shall we slaughtered in proper facility? I mean, we could we could put some language like that. I, that's a question for you and, and an observation for the motion maker if he would consider it. Uh, I don't think I would because <clears throat> I don't think it's a, it's a matter we really have to micromanage. Okay. Uh, one thing I would say is as I read these uh, this ordinance, these chickens are contained. They're not free range chickens across your old property. They're in a cage like a rabbit hutch. So um, it's not going to lend itself to abuses such as you may be trying to prevent. That's what they said about all the snakes that are now in the Everglades, I'll just point out. <laughs> I have a, just saying. I, I'm not going to say anything. Commissioner Colotti, would you consider, I may, I may, may not have heard it, regarding the chickens being allowed um, in a possible time frame, I have a, I have a concern about the chickens being allowed. I would prefer a one-year trial run at that. We have a significant problem with the roosters right now. I know in South Florida there's a tremendous problem with them, and I have um, I've talked to three different people who've been attacked by roosters on Flagler. It's an issue. So I would like to give a one-year trial run on the chicken. Uh, I have no objection to that. Um, uh, perhaps the attorney can figure how to word that one. Uh, it would only apply to the, the caged chickens on residential properties. Yeah, let me. The, the roosters running around, they're okay. <laughs> roosters running around are as if they're a, uh, a disturbing issue. animal. That's, that's another then issue. It's right. up to the chief to decide. Okay, so let's keep it straight. So we, we had. <laughs> no, no pressure, chief. All right. <laughs> So the, the ask of the motion maker was amending this to possibly have a, a time frame. I would argue all this stuff is subject to commission review and approval. So we could just put an, a calendar alert in a year and come back and visit this and say, is it working? If not, we can strike it. I don't know that we have to write that language in. <coughs> Carrie, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, the, the only caveat to that would be if somebody um, comes in and properly gets a permit, you know, they may be grandfathered in if we later say, okay, nope, they're no longer okay, allowed right, now. Yeah. They did. Assuming uh, for a second we can do it, motion maker, what's your? I'll withdraw my request for that amendment. And I'll second your Change. amendment to your motion. Uh, does the differentiation between the three and the seven days? Three Correct. and seven days okay. allows, Thank you. keeps the tethering in there, and uh, I guess everything else is as is. Thank you. So if the animal bears um, any sort of ID, whether it's microchip, tag, whatever, um, they'll be held for seven days. No identification, they're held for three before they're put up for adoption. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Can I just comment on that? Sure, yeah, if you need clarity. The only way that we would be able to contact an owner is if there's a microchip registered to the owner or if there's an ID tag with a working current phone number. A tattoo, unless it's a tattoo of the phone number, a tattoo doesn't tell us anything. So there's really only two ways for us to identify. That's understood. Okay. okay. Great, thank you. All right, so we, had a, we have a motion, we have a second. City, before we go to discussion, I know you want to go there, but City Attorney, we have clarity on that motion. Do you have enough? So there's one amendment, correct? The one amendment to the motion, which was that timing differential, and I think we'll give staff discretion to take what she said and wrap that in the language, well, identifying. So I guess that would be one clarification. If there is, even if it's not a working number, let's say it has a tag and it's not a working number, do we still want to hold it for seven days? Yes. I, I think yes. if it's, okay. yeah, if there's, 
if there's clear signs of ownership, I think it's what the intent is okay. what I'm hearing of the commission. If they took the efforts to yeah. put an ID on them, then yeah. okay. Commissioner Sachs, so, discussion so on the to clarify, amended motion. So to clarify that motion, you guys are comfortable with three days if it's identifiable? I'm sorry, seven days if it's identifiable and only three if it's not? That is what, what that? the motion is contemplating, yes. Yes. Uh, okay. I just have a question, if I can insert it at this time. How did these motions get bundled? We were discussing an ordinance on chickens, and I see we have cleanup language or adjusted language for dogs in kennels. Could possibly council explain why this occurred or the city manager? Uh, I don't, I'm not following. Where's the cleanup language? Well, uh, so that's I, I think that if I understand the commissioner's question, it's we had talked about, I think initially we'd asked staff at some point to address the urban chickens. And so I think the commissioner's question is now it's more than urban chickens, it's this, these other elements. I think it's the timing of the contract is what's leading to some of it, but. Um, so me I know Megan has been working on this ordinance for at least a year and a half, possibly longer. Um, so the, her, her work was well underway prior to chickens coming up at the dais. So it's just, we have three different things going on. Um, we have the, also have the contract going on, so. Yeah. Okay. So all right. I think for efficiency, kind of got it all rolled together. Again, that doesn't mean that this is the last time we can ever touch this. I mean, if there's like with the tethering, I would say it certainly just, you know, may need more, may need more discussion, but. So we have a motion, we have a second. Any other discussion? Not city clerk. Commissioner Colodi. Yes. Commissioner Sachs. No. Commissioner McGurk. Yes. Mayor Owen. Yes. Ordinance 13-19 is adopted. Thank you both folks from the Humane Society for being here. Thanks, Chief. Thanks. Thank you. Officer Wilk. All right, ordinance number 14-19, conduct a second reading of public hearing an ordinance with amend the city code of ordinances, uh, business article two, city attorney read the ordinance by title only. Ordinance number 14-19, an ordinance amending the city code, amending chapter 30, businesses, article two, peddlers, canvassers, solicitors, section 30-33, permitting providing for public hearing, providing for conflicting ordinances, and providing an effective date. All right, do we have a staff report on this item? Um, so chapter 30 of our city code uh, sets forth the rules for uh, four different groups, peddlers, hawkers, canvassers, solicitors. They all have to register except for hawkers and peddlers also have to get a permit. The way the code currently works is they just apply and the permit's issued. There's no review criteria for the police chief to look at. He just has to sign it. Um, so this issue came to light recently. Um, he's concerned, you know, wanting to make sure he's signing appropriate permits. So we looked to other cities to find appropriate review criteria that could be used. And um, what you have in front of you is that criteria. Um, it's, it's things like not having been convicted of a felony in the past five years, misdemeanor in the last three years, violation of other hawkers, peddlers, permit conditions, things of that nature. Okay. Any questions of staff by the commission before we open the public hearing? Any clarity needed? Just quickly, a question sure. for uh, our attorney and uh, police chief. Uh, I know that... Uh, we, we now have the ability to get on a list uh, if we have a, pr a prohibited sign on our property. It's mainly my concern was uh, the little old lady, so to speak, who would answer the door uh, being very kind and something bad would happen if she had that kind of sign and, and was able to register with the police department. Maybe it would prohibit some of those. Is it easy to, to do that, to register? 
Could you explain that process? We just go down to the PD and, and uh, get on a list? Yes, sir. I, I went to try to retrieve that uh, list this morning to find out if it was up to date. Yes. Um, but the employee that, that manages that isn't, isn't there today, so I, I can put my hands on it. Um, my intention is to, is to contact everybody that's on the list now uh, yes. to make sure that they still want to be on the list, and then we'll add people as they come down and register or call and register. I'm, I'm okay if okay. they do it by phone. Thank you, Chief. Okay. This is a public hearing. Does any member of the public wish to comment on this item? Seeing none. We'll close the public hearing. Any discussion on this item, or do we have a motion on Ordinance 14-19? So move. Second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, City Clerk. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Colodi? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Ordinance 14-19 is adopted. Thank you, Chief. <clears throat> Item C, sidewalk cafe application at 124 Canal Street. We'll conduct a public hearing for a sidewalk cafe, six non-permanent tables to a proposed restaurant. City Commission will now conduct a quasi-judicial public hearing uh, in accordance with city code, if you've had any ex parte communications, now is the time to do it. Does it include the substance of any communication and the identity of the person with whom the communication took place, written communications, and or site visits? We'll start with Commissioner McGurk. No questions. No. Disclosures, but yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> no ex parte communications. No ex parte yeah. communications. Got it. Commissioner Sachs. No. None. All right, I think we all drive by the facility on many occasions, but I don't think that counts. Uh, we'll hear from the city. Mr. Fields, uh, if you would please be sworn in. Uh, please state your name. Brian Scott Fields. Do you swear or affirm that the evidence you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. If you would state your education and professional backgrounds. Education, I have a bachelor's of science degree in civil engineering from the University of Maryland. I have a master's in business administration from the University of Florida. I'm a registered professional engineer in the state of Florida. I have 24 years of experience in land development, permitting, engineering, design, and related services. Does any member of the audience or commission wish to question Mr. Fields on his qualifications? Hearing none, any objections to qualifying him as an expert witness in the area of land development? No objections. He's determined to be an expert and qualified to give testimony. Mr. Fields, you familiar with the application? Yes. Please state whether it's consistent with the comprehensive plan and your recommendation. Yes, it is consistent with the comprehensive plan. Uh, staff recommends approval. I have a brief staff report. Uh, the applicant is here as well, as we heard from earlier, to answer any questions. This request is for approval of a sidewalk cafe license agreement to add six tables in the Canal Street right-of-way for a new restaurant located at 124 Canal Street, which is on the south side just east of Magnolia Street. The property owner is the Hub on Canal LLC, and the site is zoned mixed use. The proposed sidewalk cafe would operate as part of a, a new restaurant known as the Local Pearl Oyster Shop. The proposed seating is permitted under the Arts Overlay District, which allows limited activities outside of the building during business hours and must be located directly in front of the building. The proposed sidewalk cafe would have six tables, all within the Canal Street right-of-way, in an area approximately seven feet wide at the widest point and 38 feet along the length of the business. This would allow a continuous five-foot clear sidewalk area between the curb and the proposed seating area. So you have a total sidewalk width of 12 feet, Seven would be the widest point of this sidewalk cafe, leaving a minimum of five feet at all locations along the sidewalk. A copy of the proposed site layout is in your agenda packet. It's Exhibit C. And photos are in Exhibit D, and the agreement is Exhibit E. I have reviewed the site, and while uh, the space is tight, I believe the proposed sidewalk cafe can operate while maintaining sufficient space for the public sidewalk. The request meets the minimum criteria for approval of a sidewalk cafe per the LDR. Staff recommends approval of, of the sidewalk cafe consisting of the six outdoor tables with the following five conditions. First, the seating must be arranged so that the five-foot wide pedestrian area is maintained at all times. Second, additional signs are limited to one additional sign on an outdoor menu board, and that must be two-sided, not more than four squ square feet per side at 
Commissioner Colodi's request suggestion, uh, we recommend an additional provision regarding that outdoor menu board sign to specifically state that it cannot be located within the five foot clear path. Third condition is the applicant complies with the minimum operating standards in sections A through E as stated in the LDR. Fourth, the applicant provides the required liability insurance coverage, which is typically something they would apply for after knowing they have this approval to move forward. And then lastly, the applicant shall have a portable barrier system in place during the hours of sidewalk cafe operation. Uh, that concludes our staff report. Thank you. Does any member of the city commission or the applicant wish to question Mr. Fields on his testimony? I had a couple of questions if nobody else does. Uh, first of all, on item F D or section F item D, where it says tables, chairs, and other furniture should be brought inside. It says this operating standard has not been met. Is that just because obviously they're not doing it yet? Or is that just a, a, a typo? Um, I believe that has been met. I it's, apologize for yeah, that. No, no, it's fine. I just want to um, clarify. Yeah. I, yeah, the intent that, is. That's where I was going. They weren't open in, yet, so. so they can't be doing it yet, but I think they've agreed to do it is, is yes. what we're saying. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you know, Mr. Fields, uh, this applicant, I believe, has another sidewalk cafe in the Canal Street area. Is that correct? Yes, I believe so. Do you know if they're compliant with all of the terms of that agreement and you're have we had any issues? As far as I know, there are, are no outstanding code-related items. I know there was some discussion about the location of the tables and the maintenance of the five-foot path of whether um, it had to be continuous or more of a, call it a, a slalom or zigzag style. I, I don't believe there's any outstanding issues that we know of. And is that, let's go back to, to that issue, is that um, in this application, I think we've delineated that the tables are up against the building and so yes. it doesn't create that, I like how you, the slalom as you, as you described it. Um, and I know we're not here for the other item, but it, is that how we typically would do it where you would create this, you know, the open sidewalk and, and then the cafes up against? Yes, you have tables against the building and have the, the clear path outside of that. Any other questions of Mr. Fields? Yes, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Sachs. Uh, is it true that there are 12 feet of sidewalk and uh, the applicant wishes to use five feet? Or, uh, I'm sorry, there's 12 feet and we need to provide five feet for just general pedestrians and ADA traffic? Yes, five would be the minimum for ADA. Seven is a maximum that were, would be allocated to the cafe, which would include the, any barriers. Uh, the applicant's uh, rendering showed that the tables and chairs were up against the building. Do we have to hold the applicant to that uh, proposal? Or uh, my question stems from the fact that we have several venues on the canal district uh, and those tables seem to be kind of all over the place. Uh, some I've actually had to walk around. It seemed difficult to get around, and I wanted to address that at some time. Just hopefully it's nice to have outdoor cafes, especially where they fit. Um, and we have so many different situations, uh, maybe at least five or six I can see with tables and chairs. So I'm hoping that maybe you would share with code enforcement or planning staff that would like to see some consistency and the ability for people to get around. If the sketch here isn't sufficient, that could be a condition of approval that could be listed as part of the agreement to have the tables against the building. Yeah. Would, would it be uh, possible to address the applicant and ask him if he would do that? He's, he's, we're, we're next up on the, on the applicant. Okay. So any other questions of, of staff? He's nodding in agreement to that. If not, if the, we'll now hear from the applicant and any witnesses you would like to present. City attorney is gonna have to swear you in just so you know when you get up here. Please state your name. Henry Salgado. Do you swear or affirm that the evidence you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Um, actually, being up, it's actually 48 inches. That's the that's the, the, the uh, width of the tables. So actually, that would work up against the building. Works better than being more into the uh, into the sidewalk. So you actually have, I think, more space than than five feet of the 12. So it's probably eight. Yeah, so that works. I have no problem with, you know, saying that that, that just works for us, so. Okay. 
Yeah. Thank you. Any, hang on, hang on, hang on. Any other questions of the, of the applicant? I just had a couple of things. First, thank you for doing business in the city. I appreciate it. Thank you for asking yeah. first this time. Yeah. Uh, that, that, yeah. Always, that always works better. Yeah. Um, My mistake last one. I, I learned the lesson. All right. Yeah. Well, good. We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> um, and, uh, and I do think it is important just so you know, people, people notice, patrons notice um, when, when folks follow what they've said they're going to do versus when they don't. So sure. Um, hope we can stick to that. So thank you. Any other questions for the, for the applicant? All right. Um, we'll now hear from members of the public that wish to speak. Anyone wish to speak on this item? Yes. City attorney will swear you in. Please limit your remarks to matters of which you have personal knowledge. This is a testimony. So City please state your name. Lillian Conrad. Do you swear or affirm that the evidence you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, the Hub on Canal is not an LLC. A charitable organization is prohibited from being an LLC. I'm sure, I just wanted to correct the record. It's the Hub on Canal, Inc. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. We'll, we'll make sure that's noted. That was an easy one. Any other members of the audience wish to speak, speak in favor or against or in general on this application. One more coming forward. If you'd like to speak after him, please make your way down to the front. Please state your name. Randy Herman. Do you swear or affirm that the evidence you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Um, I think my comments are more quasi questions, but um, they mentioned the barrier, perhaps having a barrier between the tables and the sidewalk i know one of the restaurants in, on flagler has the barrier off of flagler and it has actually pushed pedestrians out into the street because it actually creates like a wall and i don't know if that's what they're talking about but i know at times that that sidewalk will be very busy with hub activities and hopefully the successful restaurant i mean i love cafes i'm not speaking against them yeah. but i felt though that that wall addition uh, created a visual uh, block and people tend to move out. And so that would be my biggest concern is when there's a lot of activities going, how to best ha handle uh, pedestrian traffic. Thank you. Any others? Nobody came forward, so we'll close the public hearing, have closing comments from the city. Br Brian, one question I had for you to, to Randy's point is the the barriers proposed included in the um, barriers plus the tables is is adequate. It still leaves adequate ADA, you know, the, the five feet that we're leaving. Yes, I think the barriers are on the ends is the way this one would oh, work. Oh, I got you. Okay. To kind of contain this particular cafe. I see. That makes more sense. Okay. Any other questions from... Commission. No. One motion. Okay. Yes. Consider the application. Move to approve. Second. City clerk. Uh, Good discussion, sure. I just want to make sure your motion to approve included the recommendations of the staff. Yes, they're in. Thank you. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Colodi? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. When are you going to open? Uh, <laughs> All right. <laughs> Look forward to it. We'll be, that's right. We'll be there. Thank you. All right. Application CA 1 19 is approved. First reading ordinances, 16-19, an amended budget. City attorney, read the ordinance by title only. Ordinance number 16-19, an ordinance amending budget ordinance number 52-18, 54-18, 57, 1801, 1908, 19, and 1119. 
current expenses and capital outlay required for fiscal year 2018-2019, providing for the reversion of unencumbered funds, providing for public hearing, providing for conflicting ordinances, providing for severability, and providing an effective date. Thank you. Um, I'd like to comment on this item. It's a, it's, if you read the, the staff report on this, um, it's a direct result of the, the increased efforts that we're making in the financial area, caught some things that we're gonna be able to clean up, so really looking forward to that. Um, also, congratulations to our new finance director who started Monday, had a chance to stop by and see him. And so. came back on Tuesday. And came back on Tuesday, yeah, saw him again today, so <laughs> it's always a good sign, yeah. All right, the second reading of public um, hearing will be held at the regular city commission meeting scheduled for April 23rd, 2019. Mike, did you have a comment on that? No, that was my question. Got it. Item B, ordinance 17-19, conduct the first reading of an ordinance which, if adopted, would prohibit the use of single-use plastics on city property. Read the ordinance by title only. Ordinance number 17-19, an, an ordinance amending sections 38 111, 38112, and 38113, City Code, providing for the prohibition of the sale or use of polystyrene and polypropylene food service articles and plastic straws by city contractors and temporary vendors on city property, providing for codification, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. Thank you. So that second reading and public hearing will be held at the regular city commission meeting scheduled for April 23rd. 2019. I will pause though. This is a we're taking off a giant chunk here. We've now this is our first chance to kind of read the ordinance. Any any feedback for for staff as we move that forward to second reading? Uh, Mr. Mayor. Sure. Uh, I question whether it would apply to an individual who is not a food service company who's renting our facilities. It doesn't appear to cover that. Uh, I did discuss this. Okay. Uh, with the attorney and uh, look forward to an answer. Okay. Do you have that answer now? Or? Yeah, I yeah. think you, you all need to talk about this. Um, so city people entering into contracts, it's going to apply to contracts entered into after the effective date of this ordinance. So people who already have a contract with yeah. the city and are providing services at Brandon Center, um, those various facilities, it's not going to impact them until the next time they enter into a city contract. Yeah. Um, so in that sense, it it will, it just doesn't right now. But but for someone new, like you rent the women's center for a private event. Then that, that contract would, would include would language, apply. correct. Yeah. It satisfies my concern. Mr. Mayor, I also have uh, several concerns. I do support an ordinance sort of like this and I'd like to just briefly discuss there may be some unintended consequences and initially uh, I was also in support of an ordinance but at the same time uh, when I realized that it would include <coughs> properties that front city property as such as easements I thought of our some of our art shows and I thought of the uh, farmer's market and I said to myself uh, how would I feel if I was a marketeer and all of a sudden it was imposed on me that I could not use plastic bags to provide uh, lettuce and uh, I didn't have time or the uh, or finances in fact to to do such an item so uh, there were there are a lot of things I, I think I'd like to see still worked out here, or maybe we could define them tonight. I do appreciate the fact that uh, some of our uh, purveyors that uh, work with the Brandon Center, we, you know, if they, if we would, could get them on board with through an ordinance, that would be great. But to kind of dump this on, uh, you know, vendors, e even the food trucks, I, I would really like to give them some more notice possibly through a voluntary ban and then get them on board through uh, through incentives, possibly if they needed it or, or we decided we would like to do that or, or uh, have a voluntary uh, banning come forward for food trucks and, okay. and other providers. So that, that was my major concern. Of course, I would like to see everybody get away from plastics, but it, it's, it's kind of an imposition from the, from the get-go. 
So maybe if anybody wants to discuss that further or. I feel like you all swap sides on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just no, going to say I, it. I, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jake, on, Jake, gotta, isn't, Jake isn't feeling well today. So we <laughs> I got to pick no, myself that, up from the yeah. floor here. No, I, I think, it's, I, I think it's, it's, it's leadership is what it is. I mean, it, this is certainly something I think we're all passionate about, and, and we bring a unique perspective to it. But certainly, and, and you took many of the words out of my mouth, and, and probably Jason's as well, if I had to guess, that there are, there are potential uh, side effects to this. So uh, I don't think we stop motion forward, um, but I, I think, um, you know, and this will lead to a, a comment I'm going to make later, but getting enough input to where this is workable, because I think putting a product on the field that immediately meets, you know, large resistance or causes large blowback, um, then we that won't be progress. So I think taking the time running this through, you know, EDAB advisory board, um, neighborhood council type folks, you know, the FABA, you're getting some input on how we, you know, we're not going to do nothing. That's not an option. But how can we make sure this doesn't have some of those unintended side effects? I'd like to call out, I mean, I was at an event on Sunday at the ACA and uh, a, a event at the Brandon Center and, you know, the, I think it was the Riverside Conservancy who catered that, and they use all the, you know, they use bamboo plates, and it was all, you know, it was a great event, and they did it. That's what we're aiming for. Um, but, you know, Brandon Center, it's in the financial report. You know, we're, we need more activity at the Brandon Center, so making it harder, making that a higher hurdle rate, you know, there are, there are potential side effects to that. So I, I, I think your, your point is well made. <coughs> of, um, you know, perhaps, I don't know, maybe we continue this to a, uh, date certain or I don't know how we'd have to do that but I think I like that we've got something to work from now and I think this is something we could take and circulate among our constituents among our peers advisors etc to figure out where we where we massage this to make it workable if we wanted to do something like that city attorney how would we what would that motion look like you'd probably need to continue it for a significant amount of time but yes it would need to be a date certain it so that it can be advertised the public hearing yeah. um, so we'd have to pick a, a meeting so like a you know June June July or not July but some kind of a yeah June August something like that yeah okay uh, so may I make another quick comment sure I, I know uh, Commissioner Glody did bring up the fact that he would like to see uh, the city easements like in front of the uh, City Hall since it technically is city property uh, I wonder if we could bring this forward, but would you be comfortable omitting easements for the time being so that people could get on board voluntarily? Uh, it's my understanding that this ordinance would not apply to public road right-of-ways. I believe it specifically does apply to right-of-way. Yeah. It's city property, yeah. including... It's... Included but not limited to any land, water, or air rights owned, operated, or managed Correct. by the city. It's, it includes city right away. That's line 7172. I would sure like to at least That's give great. people a heads up that, that, you know, this kind of thing was coming forward. So as it sits right now, Carrie, we've done the first reading. It's going, we've, we've so said it's going to be April 23rd, but we could change that date here right now, or do we have to? Table it we'd down. have to pull so um, it's we have to submit our ad the ads were submitted on Monday for April 23rd so, we'll have to um, so I'd have that. to reach out to the news journal and see if we can pull it back um, if I can't pull it back and you have people here to speak on it what we would need to do is read it continue it got it like we did the tree thing I think it was okay so there's really no action we need to do tonight well just uh, as direction um, I would like to see it applied to all of our rental facilities and not necessarily to our public road right of ways at this time. So if it's just a question of amending the, um, the definition of city property, would that be easier to accomplish and would that be acceptable to the rest of the uh, commission? I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like to have time to personally shop this a bit more. It's going to okay. have a huge impact. I'd like to take it to some of those other groups, advisory committees, et cetera. So I, I think adding another month or two, I mean, Again, I, I want action on this. I want big action. I want, I want, yeah, I want huge action. But if we're going to do it, let's do it right. So, so what date would you recommend? 
So I don't think we can, we're not doing that at this point, right, Gary? We, um, I might still be might able to pull, pull the ad. Okay. Um, I, I won't know. So it's the safer bet would be for you all to decide on a date. And then if for some reason the ad cannot be pulled, we'll make an announcement at the beginning of April 23rd that if you're here because of that ad, we'll it's look, yeah. been continued to X date. Okay. So June time frame, gentlemen? Did you have any further comments on this? You haven't spoke yet on this item. I'm just no real motion on the table. but Well, I just I want to say that I absolutely agree with some of the points that have been brought up. And... Um, I don't think we, I think we have to, if we do this, we do it uniformly, not some people have to, and other people don't. I just, so, and as the mayor said, you know, we're looking for more business in the Brandon center, making it more difficult. So I think these are the important unintended consequences that I had discussed previously that we really haven't got into. So all I'll say is I absolutely support moving this back a little bit and spending more time on this until we can kind of vet this thing the way it needs to be done. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. If I may add, two bodies I'd love to hear from would be the Marine Discovery Center. I'm sure they would like to weigh in. And our Chamber of Commerce, uh, it'd be good to hear from them as well what their thoughts are. Yeah, completely agree. And in the meantime, I also would challenge us as, as elected officials. I know many, many other cities have passed variants of this ordinance, so we can look at what they've done, what some pros and cons were on, on that. I know the language is probably similar, but even you know, challenging our, our Chamber of Commerce to get feedback from cities where this has been in past and what, what the impact was. So, One caveat, depending on the date you choose, um, if the legislature comes back yeah. preempting us on plastic straws, We'll be back to first reading um, with an okay. amended ordinance. Yeah, that was why we were trying to move this a little quickly was to try to get grand, potentially get grandfathered in. Do you, Mr. What? Mayor, do you think there's a possibility of being grandfathered? I mean, it worked with the, the Airbnb stuff for, for the time being, so I think there's always a possibility, but you, you never know. Um, so I would suggest maybe we, I guess we're tabling it for a time in June. What's the first? What's our first meeting in June? That give us all of April, all of June May. June 11th is the first meeting. June 25th is the second. So June, June 11th. Any objections to tabling this? We may have to readdress it on the 23rd. But Mayor, make a motion to postpone this to the June 11th City Commission meeting. Um, Postpone the public hearing or continue the first reading to continue the first reading to okay. June eleventh. Have a motion to have a second. I'll second. City Clerk. Hang on, City Clerk, before we do that. We we good, Carrie. So we're gonna start all over June eleventh. We'll have had input. Yeah. We'll we'll shop this a bit and yeah. <coughs> Okay. City Clerk. Commissioner McGurk. Yes. Commissioner Colodi. It would have been much more comfortable uh, just extending the second hearing date to June 11th. I think we're pushing it too far down the road, so I vote no. Commissioner Sachs. Yes. Mayor Owen. Yes. To your point, Commissioner Colodi, so that, that passed as, as proposed. Uh, I think it just adds one two-week period to do a, the first reading and then a second again. So I, I, I hear you, but I, I think we're okay. Uh, item C was removed from the agenda. That leads us to item 10, boards and commissions. Uh, remind the commission, um, the chairman of the neighborhood council spoke earlier on this item. They're asking, um, and, and they approved, I think they discussed at their meeting and approved this and, and asked the commission uh, to amend their resolution. Uh, any additional comments to share from staff in addition to what Randy had? Seeing none. Do I have a motion on this item? So move. Second. Any discussion from the commission? Getting a complex over here with all the motion. <laughs> <laughs> City clerk. Commissioner Colodi. 
Uh, yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Okay. Now we have appointments to make. <laughs> Not tonight, but just <laughs> beginning, <laughs> beginning ready because we just expanded it. So, all right. Mayor and Commission reports. We'll begin to my left, Commissioner McGurk. Thank you, Mayor. Um, two things. Number one, I wanted uh, I sh you all should have seen you got an email from Mike Shannon, FDOT District Secretary for District 5. There's going to be a meeting at the Brandon Center Tuesday, April 30th from 5.30 to 7.30 regarding the Pioneer Trail Interchange. So I encourage people to come out to the meeting, learn a lot about it, and see what's going on. Uh, the good news is, uh, City Manager, I believe we've been able to uh, get the, hopefully a commitment for the pedestrian trail over that overpass that will be confirmed at the workshop. perfect and to give some background on it that was the one thing <coughs> back 10 years ago that was so important to try to get to connect our trail systems from the east side of 95 to the west side so that is a it's not cheap and that is one of the um the uh, concessions that i was very happy to get uh also i want to um bring up the issue on the stop sign on uh third um i can i don't then this is jake's district i can defer this to you if you want to bring that up does that or i can bring it up myself how, how jake i'll defer to you how do you want to do that it seems we may have alternatives for signage and the uh speed humps so i i would like us to, you know we have a trial period uh, to test the water so to speak with the speed tubes uh, hopefully it's no longer than three weeks is that right call it the study period should be hopefully done I think this coming week right I, I, would, I, well, I, I, I wouldn't know what to tell you exactly the but well the, the issue study. I guess where I'm getting at is the issue is we voted to put a stop sign on yeah. third yeah. and I'm not comfortable with that mm -hmm. and I'll tell you why I'm not we're kind of got stuck in the middle we have residents who want something, residents who don't want something. We think we're doing something that they want. We find out that we're not. So it's a, it's, it's, it's a difficult challenge, but I would like to make a motion to remove the stop sign at third. We can always come back in a future date and address it in another way. But I think the key, what I heard, even from the residents, was we don't want a, our problem to create another problem for someone else. And I think maybe a little more research, one of the things that I heard was there ten, seems to be an issue on the south side, not necessarily on the north side. Now, I can't speak completely to that because I'm not exactly sure who lived where, but that seems to be a reoccurring theme that I'm hearing from the residents of Magnolia, the people on the north side don't have the same problem. So I will make a motion to remove the stop sign at third and hope I can get your support. Yes. So are you? Are you? Motion? Hang on, real quick. Are you? Are we reconsidering that item, or are we making a new? I, I'd, I'd probably cleanest if we just reconsider that item that we had previously voted on. I think the last last meeting, which I think you were on the prevailing side, so you can't bring up Jake and I can't. But I think whichever, can. whichever is easier and cleaner um, for every city attorney is there. Which would you rather us do? Um, this is a new action so i think the cleanest way to address it is this is a new separate change um but it's re I, reversing I'm if you guys would feel more comfortable having somebody on the prevailing side do it that way i'm i'm okay, okay. i think well, we're i was way. on the prevailing yeah, side was, of that. so we're good either way all right so we're fine you made a motion do we have a second i'll second i i don't object uh commissioner gurk i did not uh bring up the uh, third and Magnolia stop signs. I know the chief would be happy not seeing stop signs there. And I, I understand that um, law enforcement is opposed to stop signs as used for speed control. So other alternatives I would love to look at. I, I thought and hope that this is something that we're still working on, that we haven't made a final determination. I know that Collett has worked very hard on uh, what he's done so far and procured a few uh, speed humps. I would like to see that whole project enhanced and probably uh, widened. So I, 
Agreed. So I'm we, had okay a, with we that. had a motion to second. That okay. motion, just to be clear, was just to remove that one stop sign at third. For my clarity, Kyle would remind me, were there other, I thought there were two stop signs that we approved or just the one? No, sir, just okay. one, one third and Magnolia. And to be clear, that was not staff's recommendation. So um, we are, I, I like the direction that we're headed. I think we should lean on staff heavily when it comes to stop signs and using them as speed control the speed, devices. The speed cushions we had too. Yes, yeah, and I think we'll see how those work. So, all right, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Just quickly, may I sure. get a consensus that uh, we direct staff to help us with other alternatives besides stop signs? Uh, some argue that they do work and in conjunction with other devices may control traffic, but since so many people have been opposed to them, if there are other methods, even the people on Magnolia are opposed to stop signs. So if there are other measures and devices that we could use, if we could visit those, maybe you could come up with other alternatives for us. My suggestion would be let's try the, the speed cushions, the two that we have. Hopefully within uh, my assumption would be probably less than a month, hopefully we'll have them down. And then we'll monitor the situation and we'll come back to you with the report in two or three months. I'm sure we'll hear from residents yeah, as well. We're, so we're, we're kind yeah. of waiting to see how they're going to be received once they're actually installed. Yeah, I, I agree, Commissioner Sachs. I, I'm like you. I wanted to do more. I wanted to do more of those. But since we're already here, I like the idea of let's get them. Let's see their durability, their quality. Yeah. This is the first ones we've done like this, I think, in the entire city, I believe. So. Let's see how they work, and maybe the neighbors come back and say, hey, they're noisy when cars go over right. them, and it's the worst thing in the world, and now we're stuck with 20 of them. So I think we are where we are. We've got a motion on the floor to take the stop sign off, um, and I think we we certainly, I'm certainly open to re revisiting it, but let's get some stuff down. Sure. They pulled the rumble strips up in record time. I know Faith isn't here, but that was great they did that. So I think we're moving this issue forward for those residents. Any further discussion on this item? Uh, just the the rumble strips uh, you did hear from that resident who said he has reverse rumble strips now uh, we we're going to try and remediate that for him what we decided to do is we're going to cut that piece because there is no way that it could be repaired i went down there uh, yesterday we're going to cut it yeah. and then for asphalt it would be smooth so. thank you Colin. Yeah. all right so we had a motion we had a second city clerk commissioner mcgurk yes commissioner colody no Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. So that was a motion to rem not install basically the stop sign at 3rd and Magnolia. Thank you. I think we we're still in your commission report. So. I'm good. Thank you, Mayor. All right. Thank you. Took us down the trail there. Commissioner Sachs? Uh, something of great import I wanted to share first before I <laughs> usually forget an item. Uh, for the Magnolia corridor, uh, it was expressed to me uh, fervently that there is a family uh, where some of the family members, uh, these general people have some disabilities. Uh, their neighbors and the family have requested personally to me uh, that they would like uh, warning devices for their children. And um, I think it's most appropriate for us as a compassionate city, uh, a city that takes care of uh, our own, uh, that we provided for them. Um, it would be, um, on the, I guess, an interim basis for as long as that family wants that uh, type of signage, and it would warn drivers that they should take care when driving through that area. I think just putting a sign, a warning sign, uh, yeah. like that would be a very good thing, and, and it would show in the immediate area that there is a reason to have caution. I feel like I've seen those other places in the city. Is that something... What's um, the? We did have Chris do a little research on the liability aspects to it, and while we haven't found exact litigation on this, municipal insurers recommend against it because it gives people a false sense of security. Um, you know, it tends to blend into the landscape. The city of Jacksonville put out an actually a bullet list of their, their concerns with them. Hmm. Um, you, so. you might, and we've not, um, I know Carrie had, I had to leave before the briefing was concluded, but I think Carrie had just started the research when Commissioner Sachs had asked, so we might want to just bring that back to our next meeting, or she can go yeah. and send the memo out, because nobody has seen the research that Chris did. Okay. <laughs> then you all can, can decide. And if I may speak to the contrary, the Federal Highway Authority uh, has made an argument uh, that 
these, like other signs, make people numb after a while. I think all signs may, then some do abide by them. But at the same time, uh, when they made the statement that the signs are useless and possibly not legal, they had nothing to report to uh, substantiate that. And I read that from the actual Federal Highway Authority uh, documents. So what is on the plus side is family members, mothers, neighbors, all stress that when you put in those type of signs, they do work. And I, you know, if you guys need to look at it legally, um, there may be some people disappointed. I think we can do this right away, post haste. I don't think you'll see many challenges. Uh, so that, that's my position on it. So I'm, I'm looking okay. for consensus to do this as soon as we can. The, I spoke to the mother personally who said she would really like to see one. I'll just speak on this item real quick for, uh, um, I, I support doing what we can. I, have, I mean, I remember that the family spoke and you know, that the heart breaks for them on many levels. So I support doing what we can. I, I, I do though want to um, take the time, I think, to allow Chris to advise us on, you know, what we may be opening ourselves up to. Um, it's the first time hearing of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I, I, I haven't had a chance to do any reading on it. I don't know what the Federal Highway says. I don't know what other cities have done. So <clears throat> I'm absolutely open to talking about it. Give me till the next meeting and we can That's we'll, fair we'll talk about it at that time. Okay. That'd be my thoughts. I'm, I'm not the majority of the commission though, so. If we could have staff work on it post haste. So we could <coughs> I am okay with having staff give us a little more information. I mean, don't spend okay. the, don't make a career of it, but I think. Yeah, I can research. forward forward the email for you. <laughs> okay. And it will be on the April 23rd. Got it. <coughs> Thank you. Still your, still your time. And just something really nice to report. Uh, there's a family, the Kennedy family. I reported uh, last year that uh, in honor of a, a family member who passed away in Nicaragua doing what he loved, surfing, uh, they decided to get family members and friends together to clean our beach. New Smyrna Beach. It, he's from Jacksonville, the, the poor gentleman who passed away, and the family as well, but they love New Smyrna Beach, come down here a lot, and they have vowed to clean up every inch of New Smyrna Beach from Mary McLeod Bethune all the way to the jetties, and they're just about there. We did participate with them the other day, and it's, it's really satisfying. You pick up those little pieces of microplastic, because our beaches are actually cleaner than most, I found. And that's due to all the clubs and all the organizations going out, grabbing a portion of beach. So my hats go off to the Kennedys, and I really thank them for all their efforts. And the county for joining in, because they, they helped along to gather up the garbage. And uh, they're a great example for our city, and I, I appreciate that so much. And that's all my comments. Thank you. All right. Mr. Colodi. A couple of things. Uh, we have a very important... Uh, appointment coming up for the Utility Commission, probably the most important appointment I feel I will be making this year. Uh, I would like to see all the applications uh, given out uh, prior to uh, when we distribute the agenda. Uh, I'm not looking forward to any last minute applications because there wouldn't be any sufficient time to review them. Second thing, Arbor Day, just a comment. Florida Arbor Day is the third Friday in January. The state of Florida has decided to have their own Arbor Day different than the rest of the country. <laughs> so I'm glad we read ours as Arbor Day, New Smyrna Beach. Wouldn't want the state to come after us. Don't, don't tell them. They'll pass don't a bill about them. it tomorrow. There. <laughs> uh, two other things. Uh, which I actually prepared notes for. Uh, one concerns the uh, Zone 1 Community Forum that I sponsored on April 5th. It was an exceptional turnout of approximately 125 residents and business owners. Tropics var our topics varied, but the predominant issue was overuse of the district and its effect, uh, the business district, and its effect on the adjoining areas in, as well as Flagler Avenue. Firstly, 
and I say this, I do not wish to limit it visitors to the business activities, both retail, service, lodging, and restaurants. Prior to my forum, somebody had circulated an email saying I wanted to eliminate wine walks. I certainly don't want to eliminate them. I do, however, I want to help the cause of all of our events and protect the adjoining residential areas from being overwhelmed. Their quality of life, our citizens, has brought out to me over and over again that they're being overwhelmed and their quality of life is being degraded. The attendant traffic congestion not only affects the immediate vicinity, but prevents <coughs> cross traffic and normal traffic flow throughout the Barrier Island and Coronado Island. Negative aspects noted are only exacerbated by beach visitors, boaters, day trippers, and nature itself. The beach ramps are becoming more frequently closed due to the rising tides. Traffic flow and the lack of sufficient parking appear to be the main difficulties that result from the congestion. Renewing the parking study completed a few years ago will provide an excellent tool to move forward towards improving conditions. This is underway. Additional parking needs must be addressed through our land development standards, our enforcement, our code enforcement, and delivery truck regulations. The city cannot and should not be expected to, sh to shoulder the full burden for change. Volusia County is responsible for the beach and the <coughs> visitors it draws. Direct assistance with beach access and parking availability at high tides is called for with it being a shared responsibility. There appears to have been some arbitrary rules in the past where they won't fund anything to the west of Atlantic, but as pointed out to me, in the county areas just to ourselves, they build a really big parking lot at South Atlantic and Hiles. I think we deserve the same treatment and we deserve the same assistance in helping with the problem they're partially associated with. And I just want to thank everybody who showed up. A uh, little over two and a half hours. I was glad to see uh, city representatives there uh, to see the true feeling. Zone one bears the brunt of what we all know is the overdevelopment and the traffic issues. The last thing I want to bring up, I, I really don't want to bring up, but I have to. <coughs> I attended the April 8th meeting of the Turnbull Creek Land Preservation Committee. Formation of this committee was for a specific task of keeping our citizens informed of the progress being made during the land uh, purchase process. Unfortunately, it has not been the case. The city staff has not worked with the committee to provide community notifications. Instead, the staff presented a plan of action and asked the committee to rubber stamp their actions with little or no substantiation presented or little or no time allowed for their review. This format is not what the committee was intended for, it is disrespectful for the committee to ask for their concurrence. Does anybody really think they would vote against a plan to preserve valuable critical areas? The information given to the committee was not even presented to the commission for its review. Something's out of place. Transparency was the intent of the formation of this committee. What has happened is that the actions of the administration have only fueled the impression that the city operations are behind closed doors with decisions made without input from the residents in general. I want that changed. I want this committee to function as it was approved. If we want another committee, another group, another whatever that's going to give us recommendations, they deserve to be appointed and they deserve to get the information ahead of time. I had not even seen the proposals for what our next grant application is going to be. I'm very disappointed as to the way this is operating. It is not the way I envisioned it. It is not what I ran on, and I simply don't like it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right. <clears throat>
couple of things. Um, but I'll, I'll start with Commissioner Colodi's comments on that item. Um, I, first of all, that, that committee is, um, I, I think they've struggled with, with that, um, with the task that we, we gave them. Um, you know, the, 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 there's some lane exposure, if you will, as to, as to what they're there to do. Um, you know, I kind of get put on the spot of, you know, can, should they be making recommendations and, and what I shared with them, you know, publicly, and some of you were, were there and heard this, uh, but it's all on the record. Um, you know, my, my challenge to the person I appointed was I, I absolutely want their, want their input. I mean, in addition to what we, we charged them with, I, I absolutely wanted their input. Um, but it's up to this commission to give them, uh, you know, any broader uh, authority. Um, at that meeting, they, they did, um, they did pass along some, some recommendations. Um, but I think Commissioner Colodi's points um, are, they're, they're concerning, I mean, that we have that issue. So I think this is certainly something that um, perhaps we need to, uh, we need to as a commission work with staff, maybe at, our, at a future agenda to, to work through that and say, here's, here's what we like and here's what we don't like about what we're seeing. Um, because um, we, we, we have to move the issue forward. It was passed by 70%, 70, we all support it. I mean, the voters support it, we all support it. So, uh, but making sure we do it in a right way that's transparent that, and that the commission is comfortable with uh, is, is important. So um, I, I think, uh, what are we at? We're on the, the April 9th meeting. Um, any, any objections from the commission? I, I mean, I, I think this, if, if there's this kind of concern from a fellow commissioner, I take it serious. I think it merits a, a deeper discussion by the broader, by the broader commission. Um, I'd like for it to be when we have uh, the full commission here, but I don't want to lose too much time. So I'd say, I mean, there's no real staff prep work to this. I think it's just giving us an agenda item, not at the very end of a meeting, uh, when everybody else has already spoke to to speak about it. So, uh, any objections to having this as an agenda item under new business or whatever for the commission to discuss at the at the next meeting? No, Mr. Mayor, I, I support that. It, if I could make a brief comment, uh, I initially I, had made the statement that I would like us <coughs> to have a conference with the uh, task force uh, that we exchange information. Uh, it was expressed that they did not have a, a work product uh, defined for them uh, and uh, the ability to give us a summation, uh, that was expressed. I did have an ex parte with one of the members, the member I appointed and or nominated. Which is perfectly fine, just for the yes. record. Yes, yes. Uh, but that said, uh, we really need to talk with them and see what their concerns are and have all of this vetted so everybody is clear uh, on what we're trying to do and, and to make sure it's done right. So I, I do support, I support both you guys here. I think it merits a discussion. I mean, I, I think if, if we have those kind of concerns that are being brought forward, I think we, we have to have the discussion. We can pause and do it now, but I'd, I'd like to just have it as an agenda item so I can be better prepared for it. Well, I got a couple of thoughts. Sure. You know, first of all, when <coughs> Mike suggested this, I clearly remember that this is the commission moving forward with what the voters wanted, which was to buy the land so it wasn't <coughs> developed. And when Mike, when you proposed this citizen committee, I specifically remember you stating their job is not necessarily to do anything. It's just to make sure that we have an independent group of citizens who get the information that we're getting so they can disseminate it out into the community with whoever they want. It was then, and that seemed good enough. And it was at a future date brought up so we'll know maybe we should get input. And if we want a meeting to discuss where this is going, that's okay, but maybe this meeting needs to be not on the dais at a commission meeting, but maybe we should have a workshop with this group and maybe we need a little meeting to get a better idea of what exactly we're all trying to accomplish here. I mean, if you took, with all due respect, Mike, you've just taken a pretty heavy hand in attacking staff and accusing them of not doing their job properly. I would like to think that you have talked to staff about this. You've maybe tried to work through some issues with them. 
figure out, talk to your people. I, I, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm a little surprised at the heavy handedness out of the blue. I haven't heard any problems. My person, I talked to my, my appointment and she was very pleased the other day when she felt they made some progress on something that they're finally doing something. But I, you know, if uh, maybe, maybe we just, I don't think a, a, a commission meeting is the appropriate place to do it. I think maybe a workshop with this group, so we're kind of all on the same page, may be a better approach than at a commission meeting. Just my thoughts. Either okay. one is acceptable to me. I, and I think the two are very, I think the two are very different. I think the commission meeting is the right for, for the, for the issues Mike brought up, I think the com commission meeting, us getting on the same page with staff of what our role is, what the uh, advisory board's role is, or whatever we call them. We didn't call them advisory board, we called them something task else. Force. Uh, task force or committee, yeah. Um, with getting, I think that discussion, uh, I, I, would, um, I would contend, I believe that does belong here first. I think a subsequent workshop, once we've got all that ironed out, um, but I, I think that's for us to decide and give clear direction to staff, to that to that committee, um, and to know among ourselves what that direction and what what next steps are. I, I, I think that does belong as a as a commission only item. I, I, I have great respect for the folks on that board uh, and the value they will bring if set in a direction. I think right now they're struggling a bit with. I mean, what I heard at the meeting was they're struggling a bit with the direction of, you know, what they're what they're asked to do in the meeting. Versus what their what their governing document says, and I think that's the the point of conflict that, that Mike brought up. So I'd like to see us just add this to um, uh, you know, the under board and commissions, or you know, new business or whatever for for the next. Well, next we're going to do it at a commission meeting. meeting. I'd recommend that we do it under commission during later in the meeting, as in a time as we're sitting here now. Okay. I, that's my recommendation. Yeah. It is you can y'all can agree or disagree. I mean, That's I think my I, I was going to leave it to staff to pick which item it belongs under best. It would be to me either under I could see it be under boards and commissions since we're specifically talking about that, or I could see it being under uh, new new business. So, any objections to having that as an agenda item at our next meeting um, under boards and commissions item ten? I think. No objections. We'll put that on the agenda. We'll have some healthy discussion. I think you need to give some direction because we are as lost as the committee is. Got it. We set it up. Um, you all said that you wanted them to not comment, and then there were comments on the dais that you did want them to comment. Brian did a brilliant presentation yesterday and went over a number of series of maps. We are handicapped with the ADA lawsuit. Um, Kelly sent out the agenda to them at the same time she sent out the commission. There was already a joint meeting scheduled with the city commission in May with the committee. That was already on their schedule. And they are sunsetted right now. You only have them going for two more months. Um, so, yeah, okay. You know, they, you, I think we, we need to have a up. meeting next, next yeah. meeting. We'll, We'll, we'll talk through all this. All right, my comments. Uh, the Zone 1 meeting was able to attend. I thought that was uh, a good turnout. I echo many of the comments that my uh, fellow commissioner made. Um, on, the, on the tethering, I know you, you brought up a, an issue, and this is why I like doing these comments at the end. Um, on, the, on the tethering, um, you know, and how we kind of got a lot of things bundled in there. Um, I went back and I was looking during other parts of the meeting and, you know, before I think we were completely silent on it. So we had no ability to do anything that the chief, everybody's kind of hamstrung. So I think maybe it's not far enough. Maybe we can do better. Uh, but I'm, I still call this progress and I think we can always revisit these topics um, and, you know, take another bite at the apple. But I, I, I get nervous if we just keep kicking stuff and not quite doing it because it's not quite perfect. We'll just stack a lot of stuff up. So um advisory boards uh just briefly to to plant a seed for a future conversation um and, and i'm talking with some of the advisory boards about this as as well just as an individual commissioner um i'd like to see us um you know challenging those advisory boards to advise on items that are coming before us so the plastics is a great example i think circulating that among neighborhood council <coughs> edab 
other boards that, you know, they have experts. These are, these are folks that have dedicated their time and energy and they bring a, a you know, vast uh, amount of resources and, and knowledge to the table. Um, having them give us not, not a vote like a PNZ where they're approving or disapproving things before they get to us, but, you know, circulating some of these items to them and getting a, you know, hey, here's what, here's some comments that came out of those advisory boards. Here's the pros and the cons to the plastics resolution as viewed by the Economic Development Advisory Board. And here are some potential things they, they may <coughs> want to tweak. My, what I've heard from some of the folks on those boards are they, they tend to struggle with what their next agenda item is. So I'd like to see us just, and there's some other things on the advisory boards as well as, you know, terms and term limits and <laughs> qualifications and other other elements that I think we probably are due for kind of a holistic look at the advisory boards and how they function how they function best. So just planting that seed. One advisory board though that's kind of become near and dear to my heart, the Youth Council. Um, I've spoken to them at several different occasions, challenged them on some things. They've had excellent attendance. It's a great group. It's exact contrast to this commission as an all-female commission, mm -hmm. and um, great, great group of folks. And I, I've challenged them on some things, and they're getting ready to bring those recommendations back to us. I wanted to just ask the the commission if there would be any <laughs> objection. You know how we did the UC where we did kind of a co meeting, and we had them up here with us. I thought it'd be really, really cool as a as a token to the effort that those uh, young leaders have have put in to not just have them come and present their item and us just kind of nod, but to actually have them integrate in just for the very first part of that meeting where they help us lead the pledge, kick off the meeting, talk about their particular item, and then we'll take a brief recess and then kind of come back to normal order. I just think it'd be a really neat uh, neat way to, to integrate them in. And, and I think it's a great idea, and maybe we can even keep them through like public comp public participation, so they can get some kind of feel for that. That's, yeah, was, we'll we'll pick the spot on the agenda. That'd be a thing on the May fourteenth agenda. So any any objection or anything I'm not considering on that. I've cleared it with city attorney; she was okay with it. Uh, it will be a little time, but I think it's an investment worth making. But any, it's an excellent comment, Mr. Mayor, and you took the words right out of my mouth. Uh, I don't have children, but through our youth and our community, we glean so much wisdom and, and joy, really, with, with their thoughts and their motives and their thoughts, their thoughts for the city. And I would like to take it a step further. We should confer with them and ask them, what do they need? What do they want from us? It seems sometimes they're stifled, as well as the bureaucracy that we deal with. I've, I've had the pleasure of attending actually only a few meetings and they come up with some wonderful ideas that don't seem to come to fruition. If we could help them along, that'd be awesome for both, for all of us. I can tell you this group, they're coming up with some good ideas and I yeah. dare you to get in their way. I think they're, <laughs> they're, a, they're a determined yeah. group, so. Um, you should help them get out of the way. All right, so I think I heard, I didn't hear any objections on, on that. So, um, John, if you can help with Kelly to facilitate facilitate that and lock down that date and uh, make sure to just give us a heads up on that. And thanks to Kelly. Yeah, Kelly's doing an amazing job with that board. So, um, and I had a couple of items, but I'll, I'll end it on that very, very positive note for me. Um, next item up, city manager's report. It's included. Any questions from the commission on any items in that report or anything that you want to highlight, city manager? No. There was one I did want to highlight on that, and that was the, the continued great work by Jerry Mahoney and that entire team on the FEMA, uh, the FEMA contribution. So city clerk's report. Website, I bet. Well, <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, um, the city attorney, she suggested that I make a statement, I guess, for lack of a better term, with regard to the website and things like that. We in the clerk's office, I'm uh, getting caught up a little more and more every day, but um, the website thing has become quite a challenge, um, but um, as it says on to um, on our website, um, there is a lack of documents on the website, and um, and the content of the website was currently is currently under review to ensure that it's accessible for all of its visitors, every one of its visitors not just a handful, not just three or four special people, everybody. During the process, 
we in the clerk's office, we truly look forward to ensuring the highest standards of compliance are met while continuing to provide outstanding customer service, something we do every day. Meeting agenda packets, other digital documents, they can all still be obtained by contacting the clerk's office. We know it's another step that you don't want to take, but we can accommodate anyone who, who needs anything during this process. Everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be great. <clears throat> uh, we appreciate in the clerk's office uh, the assistance uh, that we got from the city attorney's office um, in getting this started. We're going to sit down. We're going to plan out how we're going to most effectively update this website with these documents. And before you know it, it'll be like nothing's ever happened and uh, everyone will be happy. I just wanted to share that with you. Um, also, I also hear that uh, there's citizens out there complaining that truly has not a, attempted to contact us, but they're complaining to other people uh, about this um, uh, ballot box situation that's going to be coming up May 1st through the 20th. I, I will say again, that the Volusia County Supervisor of Election requested all 16 municipalities to support their venture in providing a space to put one ballot box in each city hall. The city clerk's office said, sure, we can support that, we can secure that, according to whatever instructions you give us. And we're going to do it. If anyone, and I say again, if anyone has any questions or concerns, feel free to come see us in the clerk's office or call us. We, we love hearing from everybody. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I know that yep. Nancy is not here either. Actually, I think she's on a plane or close to being on a plane, but I would be very negligent to not give her a huge shout out along with Brian's staff for getting $3.6 million from the community trust. Only one of five grants that was funded statewide. For, we added 24% basically to the 15 million that the voters had approved for Turnbull Creek. So uh, I wanna give her yes. a big shout out. She's flying to California for a family event, but she deserves a big thank you for that. Agreed. I wanna go back, Johnny, on the, on the website. Um, we know it's an inconvenience. It's an inconvenience to the commission probably as much as anybody. We, we, use, the, we use the website as much as anybody to access uh, old things. And, uh, but I know many of you, it's an inconvenience as well as um, talking with Kazmira earlier today. And she was looking for the agenda. And she said, Where, where's, where's my agenda? And so we had to explain and that, that you know, this, uh, this serial litigant has, has negatively impacted transparency under the guise of transparency, which is just the, the greatest irony that, that will ever be, maybe. But um, we're doing everything we can. Johnny, I look forward to the clerk's report. Um, perhaps at our next meeting, we'll have may be able to focus in on uh, a, a, a timeline that we're working towards on restoring. Maybe we can apply like an order of priority to that. Um, to me, uh, upcoming agenda packages are probably order of priority number one, but would we'll certainly welcome staff's input on that. But I think some kind of a timeline with the order of priority applied would be what the commission would be looking for out of the clerk's office. So and we're actually going to contact DeBerry as well. DeBerry um, at the, uh, the luncheon, Johnny, that the mayor and I were at yesterday, DeBerry has gone out to bid and they're actually absorbing the cost. It sounded like it. That's what we need to do to copy the RFP uh, to see if they're actually absorbing the cost of going back and reformatting a lot of the archive documents. So yeah. it, it may just be a matter of, of looking into that effort and, yeah. and seeing if that's something the commission wants to move forward as well. Yeah, and that's a discussion we can have. I think the, the easiest thing to change is you know what, what we're producing from this point forward, and then we can look at, you know, because then you got to figure out how far back do you go? Do you go, you know, 10 years back? Is it worth spending the money on 10 years back? Or at that point, do we just do it by request? And so, um, city attorney, any report? No report. If no further business, this meeting is adjourned. Not too bad. Okay. Just an hour off.